It's great conditions at University Oval for round four of the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup in a day that's probably raw, more reminiscent of what we might see over in the UK during their summer. Uh, we are glad to be getting out in the middle and getting some action in what is a pivotal game for these two sides in the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. Uh, Sydney University, the home side, welcome Campbelltown Camden. And it will be Sydney University, the home side, that are going to be batting first. Andrew Mensel alongside me in commentary. Jack Clifton is my name. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in for this afternoon in what uh, is potentially uh, a bit of a, uh, a, a entree, perhaps, to what we're seeing um, in the BBL later tonight. There is uh, what we saw earlier today, the toss. Tim Cummins, the university skipper, winning the toss uh, and electing to bat. I'm here with the Sydney University skipper Tim Cummins who's won the toss and elected to bat. Uh, what was he thinking behind batting first? Oh, sometimes it can gradually get a bit slower and lower as the, um, as the weekend progresses, so I figured it might as well bat first. Yeah, and how's the team been going this summer so far? In the 2020s, we've been, we're two from two, um, so hopefully we can keep, uh, keep on the roll. And then in the one day, as we've um, lost a few games, we're two from five. And what are a couple of the things the team's done well so far in those first few games? In the 2020s, we've particularly increased our scoring rate, so we've been able to get to 150, 160, um, which has been um, a, a nice change from the last few seasons. And any players that we should be looking out for this afternoon? Uh, uh, Charlie Dummer opening the batting. Um, he, he doesn't mind um, yeah, swinging from the hip early. So. Thanks, Tim. Have a good game. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks. Here with the Campbelltown Camp Camden skipper. It's been a tough start to the season for you. Um, you know, what are you looking to improve in this game? Definitely probably our bowling as well. Um, during the season, of course, it's been tough in the back end of our bowling. All right, uh, So that's probably going to be our biggest touch point at the end of it. Uh, but our batting as well, I reckon the top six uh, is probably essential. First six over is really key for us, I think. And any uh, major changes to the 11 from the last T20 game you played? couple of changes, so Will Salzman and Luke Webb are out for this game. Uh, so we bring in young Andrew Salian, really good young player for us. Um, and of course, then Ashkat Misra and myself coming back into the side as well. Excellent. And any big hitters we should be looking out for this afternoon? Uh, big hitters, Adam Watley, definitely one to watch. Big red as we call him. He'll be hitting a few sixes hopefully as well in the game. Well, thanks very much. Best of luck. No worries. Thank you very much. So Sydney University off the mark already uh, with, uh, I just saw the toss previously there with uh, Andrew Mensel. I welcome into commentary, man. It's very good afternoon to you and should be a beautiful afternoon's cricket here. Yeah, good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to Sydney University. Beautiful surrounds for a Sunday afternoon of Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup action. Blake Smith in. This ball's worked down the ground. They've already picked up a couple to... Um, start this uh, this campaign thus far. Damien Mortimer out in uh, the middle. Uh, we could keep a, a batsman for Sydney University. Alongside him is Charlie Dummer for non-striker's end. Yeah, absolutely. That's a tactic many captains employ. Speaking of captains, I interviewed the Australian Test captain's brother, Tim Cummins, who's the Sydney University captain. They look very similar, both the Cummins boys, and Tim was saying that he expects this track to maybe slow up a little bit as the afternoon goes on, hence winning the toss and electing to bat. So Blake Smith to go around the wicket now to Charlie Dummer. Dummer digging this one out onto the onside. It's been a pretty good start here by Blake Smith. For those of you watching, sorry that we're just having a bit of trouble getting the scores coming through from my cricket at the moment. So they have scored some runs, but the graphic on the screen doesn't reflect that. Smith in, and this ball slammed out through cover for four. First boundary of the afternoon for the students, and it was played with great authority by Dummer, who hammered that through the offside for four. 
Yeah, beautiful timing by the left-hander there, just seizing on an over-pitch delivery, and it flew off the middle of the bat to the boundary. And it looks a good pitch out there. We were both out there before play. Mm. Jack having a bit of a, a squeeze at the pitch, checking it out, Tony Gregg style. I didn't go the go the key into the surface because I didn't want the umpires chasing me away. <laughs> but it looks a hard surface. Uh, you know, you can tell it's had a bit of wear and tear on it, obviously being a grey ground, but I think it should hold together pretty well and a good toss to win from Sydney University. Get in there early while it's still in good condition. Yeah, if you'd done that, you might have imbibed from every Sydney grade ground uh, mm. in, the, in the city manners. <laughs> Jake's a little bit uh, tricky to come out and commentate the Kings Grove Sports T20 Cup and the, the women's one-day competition, which we'll be doing in the new year, which we're very excited about. This is um, our fourth uh, match. Well, one was rained out at Rosedale Oval a few uh, few weeks ago, but our fourth uh, Kings Grove Sports T20 match. We'll have uh, the fifth and, and final round of the regular competition um, next Sunday uh, to bring to you. And then in the new year, the, the 9th and the 23rd, we have the semi-final and preliminary finals and the final in Australia Day on the 26th of uh, January. So first ball uh, coming up there from Josh Campbell, the SEMA, and Damien Mortimer. Just having a little bit of a look in these early stages. Campbell has a nice, nice action there. Very upright, moving through the crease. Tall lad as well, so we'll see if you can get a bit of Bit of bounce from, from the pitch. Trying to extract, extract something. It's always the what you want to do when you do find yourselves fielding first. Campbell in and fe uh, I guess fending at this outside the off stump is Mortimer down to third man. Picks up the single. Fielding done by Blake Smith who bowled the first over. So yeah, apologies in regards to the, uh, the scoreboard. It's not just... Uh, the issues we're having um, here at the, the, the on the live stream on, on KO Sports, but also at the ground, the electronic scoreboard on the far side um, doesn't have uh, any numbers on it, so we'll just have to um, feel our way through these first few overs, and hopefully everything uh, does get sorted in the not-too-distant future. Campbell in, and advancing there was Dummer, but uh, defends onto the leg side. As you say, this is our fourth afternoon covering the Kingsgrove Sport T20 Cup. Next Sunday is the fifth round of the competition. And that's the final round, actually, before they then get into the knockout phase of the competition in the new year. Obviously, the schedule has been affected by the, the COVID situation in the winter. So it's been a late start and they've shortened the comp. Campbell in this ball in chopped past his leg stump. Uh, a little bit of luck there for Dummer, but he gets away with it and picks himself up a single. So, yeah, the competition does get into the knockout stages, as Menna said, after round five. The top four teams from the Thunder Conference and the Sixers Conference will then advance, um, which will um, eventually see us have, a, I guess, a Super Bowl-like final between the, the winner of the Thunder Conference and the winner of the Sixers Conference to decide who takes out the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup and... Um, pockets a, a little bit of cash thanks to Kings Grow Sports as well and Harry Solomon's over there he's been a great supporter of um, grade cricket in Sydney for a long time Bankstown the defending champs is that right Jack? Yeah that's right at the University of New South Wales in the final last season we were there for that one so it's a vital match Sydney University have got two wins Campbelltown have yet to register a win in this competition, so they'll need to win this game, and you'd think next weekend to have any chance of advancing. So a vital game for Campbelltown. Advances and hammers this one high into the air. There's Campbelltown counter play getting back and taking a beautiful catch outside the edge of the circle. That is brilliant work in the outfield. It's not easy conditions here at University Oval, swirling in the wind and diving away. And uh, clutching it out of, uh, of the air. And Campbelltown Camden get the early breakthrough. They'll be pleased uh, to see the back there of uh, Mortimer, I believe it was, who's the man out. And uh, the students are one down early on. Yeah, what a terrific catch there from the fielder at mid-off. Tracking back. He didn't look like he was going to get there, but then he... He got under it, and they're always hard when the ball's coming over your shoulder. We'll see here the ball scooped up in the air off the bottom of the bat. Fielder going back and snaffled it. That is a great take. One of the best catches you'll see. And Campbelltown get a wicket. Yeah, 
I think that could be Owen Cole at mid off there. Mm. Brilliant catch, wasn't it? It's one thing to make the ground to put yourself in the, the conversation and take the catch. It's another thing to, to do it when you've got to stretch your, stretch your hands out. And it's certainly not easy with a, a little bit of breeze. I wouldn't say it's windy conditions here at University Oval, but um, it certainly isn't still. We can see the um, trees at the, the far end of University Oval are swaying in the breeze a little bit. So important breakthrough there because Damien Mourner is a very classy top order batsman and he can get things going pretty quickly. But he's gone. And that does uh, bring Liam Robertson out into the middle. So he'll be on strike after the batter's crossed at the last ball of the last over. Blake Smith to continue. Thrown up and Robertson just works that one to mid-wicket. A couple of dot balls in succession now for the visitors who are winless in season 2021-22 in all competitions. Almost an instant replay of the previous delivery. Smith drops short, hammered. Well done there by Robertson, but picks out the sweeper at deep mid-wicket. Doing the fielding out there was Josh Campbell. Yeah, Jack, you spoke about Campbelltown not yet winning a game this summer. They've struggled, but they haven't had a lot of cricket and they haven't had the best luck with the weather. They've had two games rained off in this competition. So they haven't had a lot of cricket yet. Mm. But Sydney University, definitely the former side in this fixture and Campbelltown must win. Fring in the arms and beautifully punched wide of mid-off for a classy boundary. That was well done there by Charlie Dummer, who's certainly going to try and take on this Campbelltown Camden bowling attack and outfield in this uh, power play for the first six overs. That was marvellously struck down the ground. With a last name like Dummer, that would be great fodder for grey cricket trainings, wouldn't it? Nicknames, <laughs> jokes, gentle ribbing. Smith into Dummer, who's stretching forward and pushing out to Gully. Beautiful atmosphere here at Sydney University. A few fans of the club have wandered down to watch the game, and they should. It's a great fixture. Smith in, and it's a good delivery. Dug out well there. Getting the angle right was uh, Blake Smith, and that uh, completes there. A pretty good one, though, for Sydney Uni. Picking up that much-needed boundary. It's been a, a steady start, but Damien Mortimer is already back in the pavilion uh, without scoring too many. And that'll please that Campbelltown Camden here in the early stages. It's nice to get back to Sydney University for myself, Jack. I was telling you bef before play that I attended here. This was the scene of some great academic achievement. Not by me, of course, by people in the classes I attended. <laughs> but I was certainly on scene for it. You were in the vicinity, weren't you, Manners? So they're beautiful, <laughs> historical grounds, lovely buildings. And this is a f lovely cricket ground wedged between all the faculties and the old buildings, the Victorian era buildings. Campbell to continue. And short and chopped away by Robertson to point. So both these sides uh, fared pretty well with the bat yesterday in the Belvedere Cup, the first grade men's competition, which at the moment is strictly 50 over games. Uh, for Campbelltown Camden, they would have fancied their chances having uh, batted first yesterday against Randwick Petersham there at Petersham Oval. Seven for 257 off their 50 overs. Uh, Nick Appleton, he made 58 from 61. Jordan Azaka, 48 from 67. Pulled away nicely. Didn't try and hit it too hard, but he's found the gap nicely. It's a pretty uh, long run out there, and uh, in the end, it's only just kept in there by Owen Cole, much to the chagrin of the uh, Sydney University home fans <laughs> that thought he may have uh, put a foot on the rope, but uh, they come back and uh, they end up collecting three runs. And that just shows you the value of timing the ball, not trying to hit it too, too hard. Well placed there uh, by uh, Robertson. So 7 for 257, but unfortunately, despite having Randwick Petersham on the ropes, uh, at one stage um, had them 5 for 122 and then 6 for 140. Uh, they weren't able to, uh, to get the job done. Advancing is dumber and working onto the onside. Adam Semple hits 68 
not out from 50, out with four sixes. And um, Daya Singh, 51 from 47, got Randwick Pearce, remember the line, and uh, miraculous victory. Well, uh, for Sydney Uni, they scored in excess of, of 290 in their game, 294. Dismissed Sutherland for 208, winning by 86 runs. So mixed results for the two sides in yesterday's competition. But uh, batting certainly wasn't an issue for either of them. Campbell into Robertson, who defends and just wonders where the ball was trickling to at one stage. And now they're going to get an overthrow after it was towed through, I think, by Campbell. And that's just a, a little bit of sloppiness there. And uh, alert, uh, alert play from uh, the home side to pick up a single. We've got the scoreboard working. One for 20 is the score. Robertson's on four. Dummer's on ten. Solid start for Sydney University. 20 runs after four overs. Certainly not a dashing start, but solid enough. They've just lost the one wicket. Campbelltown will be happy with this start. Yeah, they've been able to keep things in check in the early stages. It's a really important aspect of T20 cricket, obviously. Back and pulling. This one's going to go all the way. Dropped on the boundary by one of the patrons over there. It wasn't an easy one. He was leaning over the fence, but a good shot there. And uh, that one was launched into uh, the atmosphere. Great shot there by uh, Charlie Dummer. And we see the first maximum of the afternoon. Well, smashed onto the offside. You could hear the echo off the willow. And uh, doesn't result in uh, any runs on that occasion. That completes uh, Josh Campbell's second over. So four overs uh, done and dusted here at University Oval. Winning the toss and uh, batting first. They're uh, pushing themselves into a decent position here are the uh, City University side. Certainly are. Is that four overs gone, Jack? Here's the ladder for the uh, Thunder Conference. As you can see, Sydney University, two wins and a draw. Uh, so they're on six and a half points along with Parramatta and Northern District. But there's not too much breathing room when you think of Penrith, Western Suburbs and Bankstown all playing today on three and a half points. And Campbelltown, Camden probably have to win today and also win next week to have any chance of uh, featuring in the finals. It's a funny game, cricket, so you never know what uh, could transpire over uh, this next fortnight. So there's been change of bowling, a wide delivery uh, first up. Isaac there with the loosener. That one didn't come out right. Bit of zip off the pitch, though. Bit of a loose enough from uh, Jackson Izaka. First ball. This ball's a little bit short and pushed in the air. Half opportunity. He's got plenty of bat behind it. And it runs almost all the way to the rope and they pick up two. But a bit of a nervy and uppy stroke there on the offside by Liam Robertson. One for 29. One for 31, pardon me, in the, the fifth over now. Dummer's looking very good. 12 of 12 deliveries. Zaka would have been encouraged by that. It wasn't the greatest delivery, but almost was able to pick up a wicket. Into Robertson, who just drops the wrists on this one and works it out through third man down to the gully region. And um, I think about a second and decide against it. The pitch seems to be playing pretty well in these early overs. Jack doesn't seem to be playing mm. many tricks. Nice bit of bounce. Seems to be coming onto the bat pretty well. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty pretty true, true bounce at the moment, which is always nice in a, in a T20 game. Pretty difficult for the, the batters to try and show their exploits if it, it is moving around early on. But it hasn't been too much swing to, uh, to speak of. We don't normally see a huge amount uh, in the shorter form of the game. Zaka in and hits him on the pad. A half-hearted cry. For all. And Zaka realised it was going to be sliding down past the leg stump. Good delivery there. 
A little bit of shape into the left-hander there. He's been shaping the ball away from the right-handers. It is cloudy, murky conditions here in Sydney. So if there is a little bit of swing to be had, you're going to get it in these conditions. Dumb looking like he wants to try and get on top of uh, this bowling attack. Only eight balls left in the power play as well. So he'll have that in the back of his mind. He's here looking to clip it down the leg side, but it's a wide. And again, a little bit of swing there for Zaka, but unable to control it. Umpire Troy Penman calls the wide. It's going to be a handful to the right-handers if he keeps bowling like this, Isaacca, but not so much to the left-handers, just drifting in to the leg side. Dumma waits for Isaacca to deliver, and he's here punching in the air. Well taken at mid-off. Wasn't the ball to play that shot to, and didn't get the elevation that he wanted there, Charlie Dummer. So his quick-fire innings comes to an end. And good bowling there by Jackson Azaka, who struggled at the, uh, the start of the, the over to get his length right. He gets it there beautifully. And again, a nice catch here by the visitors. Yeah, Toby Flynn Dun Duncombe taking the catch there at mid-off. Was pretty well hit by Dummer, but not hard enough. Didn't get past the field. And Campbelltown, Camden, have their second wicket. And now they've got both openers back in the pavilion. So a very good start for Campbelltown now. You can even just see on that replay, probably a little bit too close to the body. Wasn't that, that room either in front of him or wide of the, uh, the crease for him to play that shot? Seemed a little bit cramped for room, but well done. Toby Flynn Duncan makes a nice catch. We saw Owen Cole take a magnificent catch at the other end of the ground. And so Campbelltown Camden will be pretty delighted with how the, the first five overs have transpired so far. Two for 31, having lost the toss. It brings the skipper, Tim Cummins, out to the middle. Fresh off a wonderful innings of 78 yesterday against Sutherland. I wonder if Pat Cummins has asked his, his brother, Tim Cummins, for any captaincy advice. Tim, an experienced captain at grade level. Pat, not so much. Last ball of the over, Azaka into Cummins, who's slamming a beautiful cover drive for four. That one was right out of the top draw. Magnificent shot, first ball. And uh, was wide and it was swinging away, but it was punished dearly there by Tim Cummins. That's the end of the five overs. And Sydney University, they're two for 35. You know, great foot movement there from Cummins. Just saw the ball, threw the bat at it, and it connected with the middle of his willow and rocketed to the boundary. So he's made a dashing start. Four off his first ball and five overs gone. Sydney University travelling along at seven and over. For those watching at home, once you get above 140 in the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup, you're really in with the game. You can even defend even sort of 130s yeah. in this level. But, you know, 140 plus, that's when you really start to um, have some runs to play with. So they've started well, Sydney University, seven and over, but lost two wickets. Robinson's beaten. First ball of the sixth over and the last over of the power play. Watley with his first spell of the match. Very small sight screen at that end, Jack. Yeah. Can you see that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not, uh, they're not huge here at University of Oval, are they? At least they've got wheels, though. Exactly. Robinson swings at that one, and it flies off the outside of the bat. And the smart fielding at third man keeps it 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, good fielding by Blake Smith down there. He's bowled a couple of overs. He's been pretty heavily involved. Did well to keep the feet uh, in bounds. And a good throw right at the top of the stump. So it's been a pretty impressive fielding performance, must be said, by Campbelltown Camden so far. I believe they, uh, they got the win in the... Um, point of in Grey Shield, the under-21 uh, match prior to this against Sydney University. Robertson waits and tickles it to short fine leg for a single. Brings the skipper Cummins on to strike. I guess the positive thing for Sydney University here, Menace, is the fact that, that even though they've lost two wickets, they've been able to keep that run rate quite healthy. If you're keeping it around that six and a half to seven runs per over throughout the first maybe 14 or 15 overs, it gives you an opportunity to maybe launch at the, the back end. Obviously, you don't, they don't want to be six or seven down by that stage, but 
a combination of, of building a partnership and rotate them to strike here for this pair, I feel. Cummins on strike to Watley and slashes at that one in the fielder in the deep. Does the fielding one run. He looks in good form, does the skipper Cummins. It almost looks as if he's continued his innings on from yesterday. 76 not out from 58 against Sutherland over there at Glen McGrath Oval. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if he's been getting a few throwdowns out the back, or, but he certainly looked like he, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's keen to get amongst the runs here this afternoon. Single there for Robinson. Smart work. Two for 40 now, and the last ball of the power play. I have a feeling Cummins might try and swing this over the infield on the leg side. After this, Campbelltown can drop the field back. Watley. Oh, he slashes at that one, Cummins, and doesn't connect. Campbelltown field is excited at the end of six overs. So the power play is done and dusted. Sydney University, two for 40. And if I'm sort of giving a points decision like a boxing bounce, Jack, I'm saying shared points after the first mm. six overs. Campbelltown, yep. two wickets. But Sydney University going along at a just under seven, pretty even. Yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with that summation. I think, yeah, I think both sides would be fairly happy. I think Campbelltown and Camden probably a bit more cheerful than Sydney University, but um, with the, the two men out in the middle, Robertson and, and Cummins, who have, have shown that they can play their shots and they can get on top of the bowling, they'll be hoping that they can continue. But yeah, wickets are the, are the key, I think, pushing forward here for, for Campbelltown and Camden. Isaac and now to Robertson, who flicks it away into the gap on the leg side, and they'll take a single, and that's all they'll get. Good throw from the outfield, straight over the bales. Coach will be happy with that one. Yeah, they've been energetic in the in the field today, the Ghosts. So some cricket news coming through from the Gabba. Mitchell Stark and Travis Head have both been named in the Australian eleven to take on England this Wednesday in the first Ashes test. Isaac and now dug out. Good to see Stark there. I think, um, I think the fact that, that he, he's an incumbent should um, should count for, for something. I think loyalty is is a two way street when it comes to professional sport, and I think Mitchell Stark's done some great things for Australia in the past. I know his his form in international cricket probably hasn't been where he would want it the, the last eighteen months, but he had a pretty tough summer last year personally with the stuff that was going on outside of cricket. Cummins waits and drives nicely down the ground. Full face of the bat, picks up a single. Just takes one, one spell for things to, things to change around. You get a couple of wickets, and we know just how deadly Mitch Stark can be. Um, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves for his performances in Test cricket. I know he's been brilliant in the shorter form of the game, and has been devastating as we saw in that famous 2015 World Cup spell. But I think in in, in the Test arena, he's come up with some really important wickets and have been a great, great performer. So I'm excited to see him at, at the. At the Gabba, hopefully there's some swing-friendly conditions for him. We see the we see the best of him, Manners. Robertson waits for Izaka and flicks it on the onside. They take one. There's a bit of a bobble there at mid-wicket from Watley. One more to the Sydney University total. Yeah, I agree with you on Stark, Jack. I think that it was probably the right thing to do to stick with him in the first test. His strike rate at test level is exceptional, and he, he does... Add a little bit of rough outside the off stump for Nathan Lyon to bowl yeah. into. I think it's quite evident that he probably will get rested for at least one of the five tests moving forward. Short, slower ball, and Cummins waits for it and can only nurdle it to short, fine leg for a single. And then the other one, Travis Head, has just pipped Usman Kawaja, who's played Plenty of McDonald's New South Wales Premier Cricket has Kawaja when he was coming up. But I think they've probably just gone for the younger player. I don't think there would have been much between Kawaja and Head at the selection table, but maybe if you're a selector in that position, you look to the future. Here's Izaka to Robinson, who pushes, and they set off for a quick single, and that is smart cricket. 
as you'd expect from the University of Sydney side. The end of seven overs, it's two for 45. Yeah, just continue to tick that scoreboard over. Dealing in ones, they picked up five singles in, in that over. Obviously, uh, Campbelltown now being able to push a few fielders back and, and try and stem the flow of runs. Not that it's ever really been racing along for, for the students, but yeah, good good over there for both sides, I think you'd, you'd probably, probably argue. There's a shot of some of the Sydney Uni fans. A yeah, good uh, Sunday afternoon. A few drinks, there's some... Uh, food going on downstairs. I think there's a, a barbecue, which there, there normally is at, at most uh, cricketing grounds um, around the country on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday. Hoping to cheer their side on to victory this afternoon. Watley to Robertson, who drives to deep long off for a single. The former captain of the of the club, Liam Robertson, who was uh, captain of um, the club back in 1819 uh, when they uh, they made it through to. Uh, the final of the um, uh, the Kings Grove Sports T20 Cup. Got beaten by Sutherland with uh, Steve Smith playing in the year that he was banned from domestic cricket. Come and slashes at that one and it bobbles down to third. Tim Cummins gets a single. He's had a pretty good season. Um, Liam Robertson as well, 242 runs in all competitions at 40.3. He's got a couple of 50s next to his name. Uh, That's a terrific comp mm. start to the year. If you're averaging over 40 at this level, you're doing mm. very well. Yeah, 48 against Blacktown in their first T20 game and then um, 10 against West in their last game. There's a big appeal from the bowler. Oh, oh and Cummins would have been run out. The fielder there, Aaron Muir, had all, well, not all three, probably two stumps to aim at and he missed them and come and survived and they get an overthrow it was all so it all happening there there's an lbw appeal mm. a run out chance then an overthrow the so result two runs almost reminiscent of baseball where someone someone gets uh gets caught but then also um gets uh gets thrown to the uh the Ooh, first base was would have been it out. wasn't even the pitcher it wasn't even in the pitcher there cummins Flicked in the air. The field is coming in from the boundary and it's bounced short. And they get two, Robinson. What they thought he was a chance there and it just mm. fell short of the man coming in. Yeah, they're hard, those ones, aren't they, Menace? Because you're not really sure whether they're going to carry or you don't want to um, race in and then the ball go over your head. So it was kind of caught in no man's land for a, for a while there was, was Watley. Robinson, a full toss. It's a slower ball, and it's just pushed out to cover for a single. Good to see they're mixing up their line and lengths, though, in Campbelltown. They're not just bowling the same length, which you do see from time to time in the in the Kingsgrove T20 Cup. So uh, trying to go with those slow balls. We've seen a, a slow ball bouncer, which I know is a real favourite of um, bowlers in, in T20 competitions around the world. So they're, they're trying things to unsettle the groove of the students at the moment. Cummins drives back to the bowler who fields. And that's a dot ball. Eight overs gone, two for 52. Sydney University won the toss and elected to bat in the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup fixture, the fourth round. One more next Sunday, and then we're into the finals. And this summer's just hotting up. I mean, if you're a viewer at home and you love cricket, then you're about to enter a golden run. We've got this this afternoon. Look at the bowling figures there, tight stuff from the Campbelltown Camden bowlers. None of them have leaked more than seven and over, so it's been a good team effort from the bowlers so far. Ozaka with his third over. Oh, that's smashed down the ground for four by Robinson. That was smoked off the middle of the bat, past mid-off, and cannoned into the pickets. That's a magnificent shot. Just a short arm jab, really. Just shows the strength and power he's got. Uh, Liam Robertson there. He didn't try and hit the ball too hard, but you could tell the way that it came off the bat and the way that it sounded around the ground that um, it had been hit hard. Got a thump as it came off the bat. Used his feet nicely there as well, as you can see in the replay. Dug it out. Ozaka, can he bounce back to bouncer? 
predictable response from a fast bowler. So we're outside the six over, so there's fielders back on the boundary. We've got a long on, a deep square leg, a fine leg, a third, and a sweeper on the offside. They're the five fielders patrolling the boundary. There's another man now. And they've just dropped, off. Yeah, yeah, mid off, back to long off, and they're brought in fine leg to short fine leg. Yeah, so. I was surprised. You don't normally see a long on, but then a regulation mid off, so that's probably the right decision there. Isaac are changing his line to outside the off stump, and that's really hit hard to cover. And the fielder there, Appleton's just gr grabbing his left hand. That was a finger breaker for sure. Yeah, never fun when you, uh, you get those. It's not overly warm out there either, so the hands are probably still a little bit cold. And that uh, Liam Robertson, well, but, uh, technically both of them, Robertson and Cummins, are hitting the ball really hard. But he, uh, he saved a, a certain boundary there. The piece of fielding by Nick Appleton. Oh, Zachary to Cummins. It's a good ball right in the block hole and nothing he could do about that but just come down on it and dig it out. Yeah, it's a golden run for cricket fans. We've got the Big Bash starting tonight, the KFC Big Bash. You have um, the Sydney Sixers hosting the Melbourne Stars at the SCG, not far from where we are here. The defending champions, the Sydney Sixers, going for a third title in a row. They're hosting the Melbourne Stars, who didn't make the finals last year. But, boy, they've got a few World Cup winners in their 11, so they're going to be tough to beat. Isaac in out of Cummins. He pushes into the offside and takes an easy single. You going to be watching much of the Big Bash, Jack? Yeah, it's great. It's a great time of year to, to have it on. And, and obviously coupled with the Ashes just makes it a, a dream run for um, for cricket fans, not so much for cricket widows. or. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm, sh I'm shipping, <laughs> shipping off my wife and kids to London. In not too far away for a little while, so I have plenty of cricket <laughs> viewing time. Bachelor Menas, look out. Izaka, defended by Robinson. I might have assumed there's going to be a, a few um, Uber Eats orders that are going to be going to be dialed in over uh, over the next two or three weeks. That's right. <laughs> two for 58 after nine overs. It's actually going to be quite sad because I'm going to have a month for myself. And most of that month will be spent just watching cricket Something and maybe sad commentating that, on cricket. Nothing and sad about that at all. You're just not playing. That's the that would be the the trifecta for you. Um, yes. If you, were, if you were currently still currently playing. But I did see you were playing yesterday, and yes. I did, and you were short. And I was thinking, oh, I could have yeah. headed out there and made up the numbers for Jack. Yeah, that would have been very handy. If In we could eighth have got grade. You yesterday. Yep. St George District Cricket Association. How'd you go? Yeah, we didn't do too bad, considering we only had eight players. We um, moved our position out for 217 in a 50-over game. So, yeah, I've got a bit of work to do next week. But, um, yeah, it's just, just, just fun being out there. It's uh, yeah, great having cricket back and um, being able to run around with, um, with mates. And, yeah, good that the, the rain kind of held off yesterday as well. It was a little See bit... other people that aren't your family. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit like that in lockdown, wasn't it? So it's nice, nice to be out and about. All righty. Cummins on strike Drives through the covers. They've taken a single. There should be two. Yes, they are going to come back for a second. Ashkat and Mishra being brought into the attack. Yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a, a bad ball by any means from Mishra there. It was just uh, a little bit of width, and, and these, these batsmen have both got their eyes in. They're looking to be aggressive pretty much every ball, but um, not, not trying to be too aggressive, if you know what I mean. Oh, that's hit high and hard towards Long On. The fielder's getting under it, and he spilled it. Unfortunately, the ball's bubbled out, and Tim Cummins gets a life on 11. They've come back for two. Mishra, the bowler, induced right, right after the, I said the they, false they stroke. They weren't trying to be too aggressive. <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that, that happens. So a bit of a commentator's curse, and gets away with one there, Tim Cummins. Just trying to see who the fielder was who spilt that chance, but here's Mishra again, and... Tim Cummins is, oh, the outrageous. showman. He moved towards the offside and then just paddled it past the keeper. That's four. Well, that's a magnificent shot. Really smart. We, we, I think that's one of the great things in the invention of T20 have, have been batters have been a little bit unorthodox and a little bit different to, to what they'll normally do and, and realising there's no one behind the keeper when there normally isn't. And just, yep, 
You probably had a backstop yesterday in your game, but not, not at this level. No, we didn't have a backstop, actually. Um, we had a backward square leg, and he had to cover fine, <laughs> mid-wicket mid to fine leg. But <laughs> Be sure to come, and it's a good comeback. They get a single to the man in the deep on the offside. Well, it could be a different story for Mishrahi. Induced Cummins into hitting the ball high towards Long On, and it just could not hold on to it. The fielder out there, and has been made to pay already. Four and one. One, the two off the drop catch as well. So it's yeah, it's frustrating as a bowler when that happens to you. Well, that's hit nicely along the carpet by Robinson. Won't get to the boundary and they come back for two. Nice timing. I do like the way Mishra is delivering the ball. Very nice seam position where the, the ball comes out of his hand. If, you, if you're looking at home, just, just watch the way he um, angles that seam when he lets the ball go. It's nice bowling. He'll probably bowl across the seam this one, but here he is. <laughs> Nice delivery. He didn't let me down, Mishra, and Robinson gets a single. And there's an overthrow there. It's a, it's a wild throw from the man in close in the offside. And smart by Sydney University. They take the extra run. The end of 10 overs. Sydney University at 2 for 71. It's the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. The first quarter of this fixture done and dusted. And you would have to say now that Sydney University have edged in front. Mm. Yeah, they have. To, to only be two wickets home, uh, two wickets down at the halfway mark. And you can see a, a look at the scorecard. Liam Robertson is leading the way. And Tim Cummins, despite being dropped, has played a, a good hand in supporting Mortimer and Dama. Two men to go. Mishra catching Mortimer brilliantly uh, down there at long off. And Drummer caught uh, very nicely by Toby Flynn Duncan. Still uh, plenty of batting to come. You've got those wickets in hand. They've been able to stabilise um, the run-getting performance, but also um, keep that run rate ticking over. We're going to see a change in the bowling. Owen Cole is going to come into the attack for the first time today. As uh, so Nick Appleton just um, ush ushering the troops a little bit to uh, see where he can, uh, he can get them. But we are going to see Cole for the first time this afternoon, trying to get a breakthrough for this Campbelltown Camden side. Started the game very nicely. But I wouldn't say have slipped, but been a little bit sloppy in the outfield. A few overthrows, a, a drop catch. Those little moments can really cause pain. Cole comes in, a little paddle, attempted paddle around the corner. They'll scurry themselves through for a single. There is no fine leg at the moment. There's a deep backwards square leg that is going to have to cover a fair amount of ground. There's no one out square of the wicket on the offside, so it might be an avenue that they look to attack. Cole, a full toss, hammered out through the offside. That is a beautiful shot. Crashes into the fence for four. Played with great authority. It was a gift outside the off stump. And uh, Liam Robertson said thank you very much and crashed it to the cover boundary for four more. Can happen with a wrist spinner that the ball just slips out and you get the odd full bunger and... Robinson did not miss out on that gift. Cole delivers drop short. This ball hammered over the top again. Not right out of the middle, but he places it very nicely out to the deep, and they will uh, do well to come back for two runs. Again, drop short there. Probably pretty well played in the end from Robertson because there is a fair bit of protection out on the onside, which is where you'd normally play that shot for a ball that's halfway down the pitch on middle stump. Overcorrection from the bowler, wasn't that from the delivery before? This one should be a good length. Short of a length. This one chopped over the top. Thick outside edge by Liam Robertson. Is happy to settle for the single. He's moved himself to 39 from just 27. Uh, the Sydney University number three. And that uh, run rate is very healthy now. 7.41. Cole's gone for eight off his first four deliveries. Come and slams that one to a wide-ish long off. Blake Smith does the fielding. One more to the total. He 
You'd think Tim Cummins would be very proud that his brother is now the test captain. Mm. What a source of pride for the Cummins clan. Cole in, Robertson back and cutting, cutting well, back with a point, racing its way down the hill towards the boundary for four runs. We've play, seen some expansive shots from Liam Robertson. He's gone aerial a lot this afternoon, but that was a proper uh, shot along the ground, back with a point, and picks up a well-deserved boundary. A very good over there for the students. 13 coming from it, and 11 gone. And they're two for 84. I think that's Robertson's shot of the inning so far. It was a little short from the bowler, but there wasn't much of a gap for him to find between backward point and point. Two fielders there, and he just rocked back and found the gap perfectly between the two fielders and hit the ball along the ground and picked up a classy boundary. So Robertson's moved to 43 from just 28, and Cummins has done a good job of rotating the strike. 20 not out from 16 himself. 84 on the board with... Nine overs left in the innings. It will be Cummins to face Ashkat Mishra now. His first over went for 13 as well. So 26 have come from the last two overs here for Sydney University. And they grip on uh, this, I wouldn't say on the game per se, but certainly on this Sydney University innings. It's starting to slip from the ghosts as Cummins has hammered that one with power down the ground to long off for a single. Setting themselves up very, very nicely here, the students. 85 on the board. If you can find yourself two, three, four down with five overs to go, you can really swing the willow in those last 30 deliveries. That's what they'll be hoping for. Laid a beautiful platform, mm. Sydney University. Mishra in Robertson is slamming that one hard to long on. And get it out of the middle. It uh, picks up a single. They're scoring off every ball now. Uni. Haven't really um, been put under too much extensive pressure in, in terms of scoreboard pressure with um, dot balls. The ball doing too much. It's been a pretty good pitch to bat on this afternoon. Wicket would certainly help um, Campbelltown Camden's cause, that's for sure. It'd certainly slow the run scoring down and they would Love to see the back of one of these. They just brought in third to short third and dropped mid-wicket back to the boundary. So. Will Cummins take them on? It's a long boundary on the leg side to Cummins. Mishra in. Cummins is going to go there. He's not going to reach it, though, and he's caught on the boundary. He throws his head back in anguish. He didn't get it out of the middle. It was a long boundary. And it uh, takes a really big hit to try and clear that rope on the far side. So Cummins goes for 21 from 18 deliveries. And Ashkat Mishra finally does uh, get his name uh, on uh, the wicket-taking tally for the visitors. And the Sydney Uni have lost their third wicket, Andrew Mensel there. Three for 86 in the 12th over. A deserved wicket for Mishra there. He had Cummins dropped in his previous over. So he bounces back and gets his man eventually. Cummins taking on the fielders in the deep. There was three fielders out on the boundary there, and he hit it straight down deep mid-wicket's throat. A deep square leg's throat. And a good catch. The long boundary. The pitch is in the middle of the square, pretty much. They've, they've done the right thing here, Sydney University, because it's a, a TV game. They've got the pitch in the middle. But still, it's a very long side out there. You have mm. to... Really connect with it to carry the boundary. The other side's um, heading towards the sort of um, the university buildings is a bit shorter, but that's a tough boundary to, to get over. I think if he timed it out of the middle, it probably would have sailed over that boundary, but hadn't really been timing some of those uh, those deliveries of late, Tim Cummins. So uh, Robertson's on strike. The batsman were able to cross, and he nudges this down to short fine leg for the single. The new man in is Ryan McElduff. McElduff. We didn't decide this yet, did we? No. So he will take guard. Pretty decent position to come in as a middle order batsman. A bit of time to get your eye in and get your timing, especially with Liam Robertson doing the damage at the other end. 45 not out uh, for him, looking to notch a, another 50 in his Sydney grade campaign for season 21-22. It's 
forward and just nudging this one back down the pitch. So Mishra pulling it back a little bit here. Did you see the player for UTS North Sydney that had played, has played yesterday, played his 500th McDonald's New South Wales Premier Cricket game? Was it Rob Aitken? Yeah, Rob Aitken, yeah. 500 games. Something like 11,000 runs and 600 plus wickets. What a career that is. Remarkable, really, when you think about that. Mishra in. McKeldoff nudges onto the onside, and he'll get himself off the mark. But a very good over there from Ashkat Mishra. Uh, just the four runs coming from it, and a wicket uh, to finish. He has one for 17 from two. And uh, Sydney Uni being pegged back a touch. Three for 88 after 12. He'd have a few stories from his many years playing grade cricket, mm. that's for sure. And just the the ability to be able to perform at first grade level over many, many years is quite exceptional. It's it's a very high standard of cricket, I guess. You know, if you're just watching and you're thinking, what's first grade cricket like? Well, usually if the, someone you went to school with is the best cricketer that you, you know, they're the sort of people that end up playing first grade. It really is competitive. It takes a lot to get into the first grade sides. And to do that and then play 500 games, it's quite extraordinary. Yeah, great servant for North Sydney cricket. And then usually the best player in the first grade side, they're the ones that you see playing for New South Wales and Australia. In comes that Blake Smith around the wicket. Peter McKelduff, who works it back with a square leg, trying to give the strike to Liam Robertson as much as he can, as well as get his hand-eye coordination going in the early part of the innings. Two off three for McKelduff. Robertson, 45 from 30. Blake Smith has gotten some pretty good areas so far in this game and wide of the off stump and it's a big waft there by Liam Robertson. One of the interesting things about first grade cricket is I'll continue after this delivery. Robertson hammers this one down the ground. It could split the two fielders there but that's a good piece of work and uh, ends up being Owen Cole who does the fielding but was well supported. Uh, there by Flynn Duncan, just the single. Yeah, playing first grade, you know, you can rock up and you can be, you know, if you're a batter, you can be facing in New South Wales and test bowlers one week and then... Smith into Robertson, who does pretty much the exact same shot to a very similar ball. He got two from the last ball. He only gets one here to move along to 48. Good piece of fielding out the deep by Flynn Duncan. Yeah, you might turn up and play a, a test bowler one week or a state bowler and then the week after some young speedster who's 16 or 17 doesn't know where it's going but got a heap of talent. So it's a great breeding ground for cricketers. Blake Smith short and a dab outside the off stump, a play and a miss by Ryan McKelduff. We've seen a bit of that in covering these Kingsgrove Sports mm. T20 Cup matches. You see some dazzling performances. And a lot of stars. Smith in McKelduff. Bunts it back to the bowler. Good over there from uh, Blake Smith. Four runs coming from it. Pulling it back now are the Ghosts. Four from that over. 13 gone. Three for 92. McKelduff, the new man, is two. William Robertson pushing towards another 50. He's 48 from 33. We were commentating last summer on a lot of Sydney Cricket Club matches and the Menenti brothers, um, Harry and Ben Menenti, I think they've both moved down to Tassie to try mm. and play um, high-level cricket there. Ben Menenti played a, a Marsh Cup game for Tasmania and his brother took 10 wickets and scored 100 in the same match. Wow. That is some achievement, man. I wouldn't mind doing that for the season. Mishra in. Clipped off the hips here by Robertson. He might get two here. It's a bit of a chase in the outfield. They turn around quickly and that's 50 for Liam Robertson. Wonderful innings off just 34 balls. And he'll get a, a polite round of applause from the fans here at University Oval. He's uh, played some big shots. He's played some wonderful cricket shots. And he's run uh, well between the wickets uh, as well. So what I'm saying is you never know where these players might pop up. Mishra into Robertson, who waits. And again, clips this one off the hip down to short fine leg. Happy there is the skipper Appleton just to field it and take the single. A fine innings for Robertson here this afternoon. Came in fairly early. He's weathered the storm and then accelerated in the second half of his innings. And now 51 of 35 deliveries. 
he could really explode in these last six and a half overs. Well, that's the key now, isn't it? Having done the hard work just to stay in and, and push past 50. Mishra in and a little ram shot over the top, loops its way down towards uh, the fine leg boundary for four. Smart work by Ryan McKeldiff. It's four more to the students. Uh, McKeldiff there really showing all his skill there and fearless, fearless, moving across to the offside. Just guided it past the keeper. Such a terrific shot. They know their angles, these university players. They make it look easy, but that's an incredibly difficult shot to play. Mishra to McKeldiff, who tries to go downtown. It loops and hangs in the air down to Long On. And that's the end of the inning. So it's short lived for Ryan McKeldiff. He departs for six. And Camelton Camden just continue to make little inroads here at University Over. They pick up the fourth wicket. It's four for 99. Yeah, Mishra's bowled nicely, and he deserves that second wicket. McKeldiff did not time that one at all and just looped to the fielder. He took a good catch. Now the pressure really does fall on Robertson's shoulders. Can he shepherd Sydney University past 150 in these last six and a bit overs? And yeah, once you get above that, that's going to be a really tough task for Campbelltown to chase that down. Charles Litchfield is the new man in. But the batters uh, were able to, to cross. It's looking to play... That lofted drive down the ground, but as we talked about it, being a big hit square of the wicket on the leg side where Liam Robertson is, is facing up now, it's a pretty big hit down the ground as well. You've probably got to time the ball fairly exquisitely to get it. There's the, the batting card, and apart from Liam Robertson, I wouldn't say it's ugly as of yet, but a few starts and players not able to push on. So they'll fancy themselves here, Campbelltown, Camden, another wicket, especially if it was Robertson. They would be up and about, and I guess their goal is to keep the students under 150. Mishra in and steered out to point. There's a little bit of a miscommunication. They fire the throw in at the non-striker's end, but Robertson does get home safely. Might have been in trouble there if that was a direct hit. We'll see Robertson just stopped a few paces down the pitch. But Litchfield kept going. Litchfield's first ball. Oh, he's bowled him. That's a cracking delivery by Mishra, who's really turning the game on its head now. Three wickets for the uh, pace bowler. He's got three for 25 from three, and that's a golden duck for Charles Litchfield. And all of a sudden, Sydney University in a little bit of trouble here at University over Andrew Mental. They're five for 99. It's been a good couple of overs for Campbelltown. Three wickets and... Just turning this fixture towards their, their way a little bit. Putting the pressure on the lower order from Sydney University to build on the good start by Robinson. But that's a terrific delivery mm. by Mishra. I really like the way he lets the ball go. It's got a little bit of Chimin Devas about him with the seam position and the way he presents the ball to the batter. And when you do that, you do allow the ball to swing a little bit and maybe get a little bit of late movement. I'm not sure if that was the case there certainly a good delivery that got through Litchfield and yeah he's Mishra's three wickets much deserved played a little bit across the line there uh, did Charles Litchfield so brings another new man to the crease in Max Hope a little rounder from Bathurst Blake Smith to continue his last over and Liam Robertson's kind of been at the North Strikers end as, as three wickets have tumbled relatively quickly first Man to go was Tim Cummins. And uh, since then, yeah, Ryan McKeldiff and Charles Litchfield have followed in a similar vein. Just means that students probably just need to try and reset and maybe build a partnership over the next couple of overs. Which does just slow things down. Opportunity for 150. Obviously still there, but less likely than it was two or three overs ago. What did Max Hope do? The left-hander. Hope faces Blake Smith, who's short and wide, and it's been chopped away onto the onside, so Hope will get off the mark. Bottom edge onto the keeper's pad there, and the ball raced out onto the onside. And Hope's away. It's all up to Robertson, though. Yeah, you feel that 
he needs to bat through this innings, does he? There's an appeal for caught behind fairly confidently from Blake Smith. Umpire Penman says not out. It's a slight noise I could hear from here, but maybe that was the bat hitting, bat hitting the ground or mm. flick on the pad or something. Very exuberant appeal. This ball hits in the air. It's going to get one bounce to the man out in the deep, which is Toby Flynn Dinkum, Duncan. And uh, he keeps it to just a single. So Robertson looking to go downtown on that occasion, not timing. It's maybe an indication that the pitch may be slowing up a touch. The timing's been a bit off from uh, some of the um, Sydney Uni batsmen over the last few overs. Might also be the fact that you need to get your eye in a little bit on this pitch. Smith in and Hope driving nicely, but straight to cover. Brought this back nicely. Um, has Blake Smith none for twenty, none for twenty-one, of three point five. So only very slow, which is good. This one clipped off the toes. They might think about two here, but no, it's a good piece of fielding out in the deep. Keeps it to the single. So good bowling there by Blake Smith. Four overs for him, none for twenty-two, and five overs remaining. Andrew Mensel. City Uni, they're five for 104. They are indeed, Jack, and it is go time on the Sydney University innings. Five overs to go, 30 balls. They get 50 off those 30 balls. That'll get them to 154, which would be a very competitive total. The trick is for Campbelltown to try and keep them around, a runner ball or a little bit more than that, maybe 40. And then that keeps the target around 140. The Mishra, his last ball of his spell, he's bowled three overs, three for 25. Max Hope is on strike. Keeper standing up to the stumps. Slashes at that one and it squirts away off the inside edge. And it's gone for four. Beats short, fine leg. And Max Hope gets his first boundary of the innings. He's off. He's away to six now. Yeah, element of luck in that uh, in that shot from Hope. He he certainly threw the bat at it and uh, got enough of it to keep uh, Blake Smith interested for pretty much the whole chase. But got to force that. Just breaks the shackles a little bit. Need a bit of luck in these last few overs. Mishra. Hope slashes at that one, and it's a look through the gully region and has run away for four consecutive boundaries for Hope. A little bit of width, and he threw the kitchen sink at it, and it ran away for four. Yeah, probably not two shots he's going to look back in great fondness, but it doesn't really matter what it looks like. The result has been back-to-back uh, -back boundaries, and that is really helping the uh, Sydney Uni cause, and, and Campbelltown Camden must just be uh, frustrated by seeing that two balls in a row. Good deliveries that end up seeing eight runs taken off them. Mishra again. That's steered by Hope to third. And they think about two, but Hope slips at the non-striker's end. And that leaves Robinson on strike. Good start to the over from Sydney University with a couple of boundaries. Robinson on strike. There's three fields in the deep on the onside, protect, protecting the longer boundary. Then a deep long off and a sweeper on the offside. Where will Mishra deliver this one? Full ball hit hard and high for six over long on. That has gone like a rocket off Robinson's bat and cannons into the hill over there. Six to Robinson. Yeah, well... He's absolutely smoked that one. He's played some really good shots today, Liam Robertson. That's probably up there in the, the top three. Mishra delivers. It's a shorter ball and just poked at by Robinson, and they get a single. Well, it's been an expensive over so far. 16 runs coming from it. Exactly what... Campbelltown do not want these expensive overs. Yeah, well, it was like the momentum shifted when they got those three relatively quick wickets, but the momentum shifted back to, to Sydney Uni now, Menas, with uh, such a big over happening late in the innings. Hope now. 
pushes to long on for a single. Mishra will be glad to be out of that over. He finishes his spell today. Three, four overs, three wickets for 42 runs. Could all have been very different had that catch off Cummins been mm. taken off his, I think, second or third delivery of his first over. But still a good effort from Mishra. Yeah, probably the, the figures probably don't tell the full story. I think very unfortunate, as you mentioned, the drop catch on Tim Cummins that should have been taken. Then even there, um, uh, an edge went, which, uh, which went past the stumps of four. And then a, uh, maybe not an edge, but an uppish stroke through Gully, which went for four more. So, um, yeah, he'll be happy to have the three wickets. Maybe not the 42 next to his name, but uh, still uh, some good bowling by the left armour. New bowler being brought on from the grandstand end. Adam Watley will come on for his third over. He's bowled two overs, none for ten so far. The skipper, Nick Appleton, is moving the field around. Four overs to go for Sydney University. Already 121 on the board, so it's been a prosperous afternoon so far. Hopes on strike. Here's Watley. Good tight delivery to start this over and all Hope can do is play it back to the bowler. So a dot ball, it's like gold at the moment. Yeah, that's a good area there from, from Watley. And they've got to just try and pull it back here. If they can get through this over, maybe only concede five or six. Just pulls it back, puts a bit more pressure onto Sydney University. Watley. Slashes at that. But field is running around. And he dives and he stops it. And hopes restricted to just two there. Good fielding from the man in the deep there. Yeah, it was a great passage of, uh, of cricket, but great passage of play there. It was the greatest ball by Watley, and it was carted away. I thought that was racing its way to the boundary, but a great piece of uh, fielding on the fence out there. As you mentioned, Menes restricts it to two, but Hope's starting to open the shoulders now as well, which is, is danger signs here for the Ghosts. Watley. Short again, and Hope's back. Doesn't time that one, and... Get a single, brings Robinson back on to strike. He's been seeing the ball like a football so far this afternoon. Yeah, really good hand here from, from Hope. The, the last thing Uni wanted was someone else to come in and, and lose their wicket. He's done well of forming a partnership, giving Robinson strike, but also himself putting away the bad balls and, and knocking the ball around the park. It's been, a, been an important innings, the, the 15 we've seen from, uh, from Max Hope so far. Yeah, a vital time. Watley now. Robinson's in, hit high. They're coming towards the commentators, and that's six. Robinson is going off here at Sydney University Oval. That ball was smashed over the bowler's head. I thought you were going to leap out of our position, Menas, and try and catch, and catch that. it. You, were, you looked pretty excited as it was heading towards us, but another great shot. Just, uh, I didn't think it was that bad of a ball by Watley, but just that big stride down the wicket, thumped through the line and just sailed. Uh, over the boundary for six. Oh, look out if you're near this ground. Another one hitting the air, but the field is coming in. And he's taken the catch. And there goes Robinson, a fine hand. He makes 67. Terrific innings from the Sydney University, number three. Watley gets the wicket. Six for 130. Yeah, it's... Um Maybe a sliding doors moment in, the, in this game, man, is because you feel that if, if Liam Robertson had stayed in for another two overs or a stage to the death, maybe 170, 180 might have been on the, on the, on the cards. Oh, he's getting a rapturous applause from his faithful here at University Oval. They're loving it. Oh, they love Robertson here. Clap him off. Whereas if, uh, yeah, if, um, whereas now I think Campbelltown Camden could mm. fancy themselves of keeping it around that 150, 155 mark. You're 100% right. That he could have gone off if he'd stayed out there for much longer. So Dougal Holloway uh, joins Max Hope, and, and they've just got to try and scrape together as much as they can in these last three and a bit overs, and, and I'm sure 150 probably will be the minimum. 
regardless, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a pretty stern test for, for Campbelltown Camden coming in. Oh, it's going to be an exciting chase this afternoon. Runs on the board, good conditions. What lead to hope? Good ball in the block hole, and Hope just plays it back to the bowler, and that's the end of Watley's third over. Just conceded nine there, which is a pretty good effort when you think about one ball disappearing towards our commentary position for six. That's a good effort. Yeah, especially in these these death overs as well. Never easy to bowl as a, as a paceman because the batsmen like the ball coming onto the bat, like that pace coming off the pitch. So um, he's done well to, um, to, to remove the danger man. Robertson, who's played a, a marvellous innings of 67, Showing just how dangerous um, he can be, but he's done a done a job for his uh, for his skipper there, Adam Watley, and it's, um, yeah, I'm sure Nick Appleton probably would have taken nine runs uh, in that over if it meant the um, see the back of, of Liam Robertson, which they've been able to do. Josh Campbell being brought back into the attack for Campbelltown Camden. Two overs, one for thirteen so far. He bowled well beginning of this innings but it's a bit of a different situation now Jack he's going to have Holloway and Hope heading towards him and trying to hit him a long way yeah he has the protection out in uh, at the deep and I, I guess the advantage is the fact that it's Holloway's first ball sure they would try and isolate him in these these first few balls of, of this over and try and keep Max Hope as much as they can at the non-strikers end who himself hasn't been in for that long it's a big lad Holloway and pokes at that one and steers it past Gully. And they've come back for two. Good running. Bit of a bit of a misfield there from the Campbelltown fielder and getting a bit of a, a razzing from the, the locals. It's been a, it's been an element that I've I've really enjoyed watching from Sydney University this afternoon. They're running between the wickets. Probably something as Australian cricket fans we take for granted because we are one of the better countries of running between the wickets in, in all different formats. Holloway pushes nicely down the ground and he'll get a single. Brings Hope on to strike. Six for one, three, three here, University Oval. I have to say, there's been a different spirit from the university clubs that we've seen. We commentated on New South Wales University last year, another raucous crowd, same mm. with Sydney University. They love their Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup cricket they do, at the don't universities, they? don't they? And just nudge to Gully. They get a single. And another overthrow. That's bizarre. That's deflected off the keeper towards cover. It's been five or it's six been pinball. overthrows yeah, today, it's hasn't been a bit of pinball happening here from Campbelltown. I guess it's, it's always handy to be backed by a, a, a university and have the, the young lads that, that go there and they get some of their mates across. And, um, well, that's what, that's what T20 cricket's about, isn't it? Connecting with a younger audience. Hope waits and he's... I think that's come off the bottom of the bat. But yeah, you know, T20 cricket is a younger person's game. So imagine if you're a, a university student, you think about winning IPLs and T20 comps. Fourteen balls left in this innings. What damage can Hope and Holloway do? Hope waits. He swings at that one, but it's good bowling from Campbell. And it's a leg by to the total. Yeah, he's bowled pretty well in this over. Um, Campbell kept fairly tight. There's hasn't given away the a four or a six which is invaluable at this stage of the innings. Hope and, and Holloway just haven't been able to get it right out of the middle. Very hard to go swing for the fences when you first come in. Holloway pushes too long on for a single. That's the end of the 18th over. Eight runs coming from it. The seven runs coming from it. That's very, yeah, very tidy for, for the 18th over uh, in this competition to keep it around that seven. Um, yeah, two overs to go. That run rate 7.61. 150 probably a par, and I think that'll be a difficult score to chase down. Um, anything over that is, is going to be advantageous for Sydney Uni. There's the, 
the bowling card. Blake Smith has bowled very tidily, as has Josh Campbell and um, Jackson Azaka. Um, Akshat Mishra, the, the chief wicket taker, but unfortunately 42 taken off his four overs, and Owen Coles solitary over going for 13. But here's um, Adam Watley to uh, begin the 19th over. Holloway swings hard at that one. Bounces short of the fielder in the deep and brings Hope onto strike. Hope 17 off 14. He came to the crease after a few quick wickets fell and he, he stuck with Robinson. Now it's Hope's turn to shine. Can he do something with these last 11 balls? Two fielders, three fielders in the deep on the onside. Two on the offside. Nothing behind the wicket. If he tries the old paddle, plenty of room there. Watley in and Hope hits it hard, but he won't beat long off. Holloway is on strike. Watley. Slower ball and it's hit back at the bowler who parries it to long off. Grabs his fingers in frustration and pain. Probably a mixture of both. Brings Hope back onto strike. They pulled this back nicely, Campbelltown Camden. Especially these last three or four overs. I know Robertson did some damage when he was out there, but outside of his innings, there hasn't really been much to write home about in regards to to Sydney United then kept fairly quiet. Watley. Again, nice change of pace. And that was some deft batting by Hope. He backed away, opened the face, and they come back for two. Watley, two balls left. It's bowled well, 3.4 overs, one for 24 so far. Been hard to get away. Hope. Oh, he's moved across and he's tried to hit it past the keeper and it's just come off the bottom of the bat into the mid-wicket region and he gets a single. Not quite the intention, but gets away with it. <laughs> Yeah, they're just, just trying to try things uh, a little bit different, and you, you need to do that as a batter at this stage of the inning. Shuffle around the crease, try and push the bowler off, off his line and his length, and um, it didn't uh, it didn't really eventuate the way I'm sure he would have liked it there, Hope, but if he'd got it behind the keeper, it probably would have been four. What, Leon? That's edged, and it's going to run away for four. Unlucky for the bowler there, but Holloway swung hard. And it goes for four, and he's into double figures. He's on to ten. And a good finish to the over for Sydney University. They're six for 147, and you would think they will crash past the 150 mark, Jack. Yeah, if you're going to swing, swing hard. And that's what Dougal Holloway did there. It raced away, but you know, it gets him within striking distance of, of 150. Um, they'd be hoping they might be able to eke it up to, to 160 if they can have a big final over, which we've seen in this uh, Kingsgrove T20 Cup a few times uh, in this campaign. But, yeah, very, very healthy total here by Sydney University. Batting first. Anything, as you, you mentioned, over that 130, 140 mark is, is going to be a difficult to chase down. You're going to feel confident about it. And it's been a, it's been a pretty solid uh, batting performance from, uh, from the students. Robertson leading the way and, and some helping hands throughout that middle order as well, Manners. All right, it's the last over. Here's Campbell. Hope swings at that one and it's along the carpet for a single. But yeah, you're right, man. As it has set itself up really nicely um, for, for this chase this afternoon and, and see what Campbelltown Camden can do. And they'll probably identify the first six overs as, as real key uh, to try and take control of the, of the run chase. Campbell in again. And Holloway doesn't time that one. And he'll get a single 
Oh, it's, and it's a vital run chase for Campbelltown Camden. If they lose this afternoon, you would think that's it. It's gone. pretty much a, their grand final, isn't it? Man? Exactly. So they've got nothing to lose. They've got to go out there, as you say, in those first six overs and be adventurous. The Sydney University captain, Tim Cummins, has flagged the possibility of the pitch slowing down. So use the hard new ball. Here's Campbell to hope. And he, oh, he's hitting hope, that one. High in the air. And he's caught. Good catch by the fielder at deep square leg. Max Hope tried to put that one onto the hill. Didn't quite time it. Came off the top edge of the bat. Campbell gets his second wicket. And Hope's gone for a lively, a spirited, a useful 22. Yeah, I thought for a moment that one was going to sail out of Sydney University and maybe onto King Street up at Newtown. But, uh, yeah, just held in the, uh, the the wind and the breeze there and, yeah, not out of the middle of the bat there from Max Hope. Yeah, not going to hold any blame to a batsman doing that in the, the final over the innings. It was, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, entertaining and lively innings there from Max Hope. Available 22, and uh, but Campbell's done well to, again, get a breakthrough. Um, just when it uh, looked like... Things might be getting away from um, Campbelltown Camden this afternoon. They've always found a way to get themselves back in it now. And um, only two runs scored from the first three balls this final over. That is a uh, very nice nice work by them. They'll need to finish strongly here. You're right. And it's been a gutsy effort for Campbelltown. You're dead right, Jack. They could have just could have got away from them this inning so easily. You know, when Cummins and Robinson were there batting, it did look like it could get ugly. But they've, they've stuck with Sydney University. They've battled away. They've chipped in with vital wickets and it's a competitive total from Sydney University but not out of reach here's Campbell and he's bowled him straight through Holloway he's got two in two Holloway went for the big one and missed it and Campbell he's got his third wicket yes yeah, and great fight back here from Campbelltown Camden full on the stumps and the old adage of uh, you miss I hit uh, certainly ringing true there for, for Campbell who's coming with two a pretty valuable wickets laid on you never know how um, important um, these last few overs where there's been a fair few wickets for Campbelltown Camden, not too many runs to speak of. They still haven't reached that miraculous 150 spot and you'd think that they'll probably only just get there with two balls to come. Devlin Malone, the leg spinner coming in uh, coming in now and yeah, this is yeah, almost kind of got to the position where it, it's almost level pegging. I think you'd put S Sydney Uni just ahead because it's a pretty healthy total in the fact, the fact they've batted first. Um, but Campbelltown can to maybe just shift the momentum a little bit with some wickets late on. Mm. Well, if, if the total had got up to 170, 180, then it would have been probably out of reach. But now it's something they would feel they can chase down. I think even 160, I think psychologically, knowing it's eight and over can be, can play in your mind a bit more. Well, Campbell will fancy his chances of a hat trick here. Yeah. He's got the number 10 batter in Malone. Here it is. Hat trick ball. Campbell delivers and. There's a, oh, that almost got the edge. There's an appeal for run out. Smart keeping. He threw the stumps down, but, wow, Campbell desperately close there to a hat trick. Almost a team hat trick as well. Don't see too many of those. We I was getting excited. See, I, I know. It'd be good to call a hat trick. I know. You've been longing to do that. No, I did one last year. Harry Menenti's hat trick in the 50 over final. I think it was the 50 over final. I know you've called Mitchell Starks two hat tricks. Here's Campbell. Last ball of the innings. Gets past Malone. They take a bye to the keeper. So Sydney University finished with a round eight for 150 off their 20 overs. Good over to finish from Campbell. He just conceded three runs. So that's terrific bowling. He finishes with four overs, three for 21. That's exceptional stuff. And in the end, Sydney University have battled and bashed their way to eight for 150 but really the star was Liam Robertson 67 off 43 deliveries ably supported by Tim Cummins the skipper 21 off 18 and Max Hope 22 off 19 so after a short break Campbelltown will be chasing a 151 to get their first win in the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup yeah, and it's, it's to keep their season alive. So the, uh, the stakes are pretty high for Campbelltown Camden. They were able to pull things back at the, the back end, those last five or six overs. Uh, dismissing Liam Robertson probably helped that um, a little bit. And they've, uh, they've done, some, uh, done some really good bowling and, and fielding there. City Uni probably felt they left maybe 15 or 20 runs out there. Um, outside of Robertson, 
that I guess some of the other batters probably didn't look as comfortable as um, as their um, as, as their top order batsmen did. But 150 runs on the board in the T20 at seven and a half and over is a, is a pretty good total to have. And um, yeah, I think uh, things will uh, will be interesting when we we come back in about 10 minutes' time. Yeah, most certainly. So, um, yeah, the, the bowling figures there, Josh Campbell, 3 for 21, Mishra, 3 for 42, and Izaka, 1 for 19. All right, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll be back to cover the second half of this fixture. Campbelltown, Cam- Camden, chasing 151 to win this Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup fixture. Tune in in about five minutes' time. Ozaka with his third over. Oh, that's smashed down the ground for four by Robinson. That was smoked off the middle of the bat. The uh, avenue that they looked to attack. 
Cole, a full toss, hammered out through the offside. That is a beautiful shot. Crashes into the fence for four. Played with great authority. It was a gift outside. Right, to Cummins. Mishra in. Cummins is going to go there. He's not going to reach it, though, and he's caught on the boundary. He throws his head back in anguish. He didn't get it out of the middle. It was a long boundary. In the same match. Wow. It is some achievement, man. I wouldn't mind doing that for the season. Mishra in. Clipped off the hips here by Robertson. He might get two here. It's a bit of a chase in the outfield. They turn around quickly. And that's 50 for Liam Robertson. Wonderful innings off just 34 balls. Got to play. Mishra to McKelder. who tries to go downtown. It loops and hangs in the air. Down to Long On. And that's the end of the inning. So it's short-lived for Ryan McKelder. He departs for off six. And a sweeper on the offside. Where will Mishra deliver this one? Full ball hit hard and high for six over Long On. That Watley now. Robinson's in, hit high. They're coming towards the commentators, and that's six. Robinson is going off. Another one hit in the air, but the field is coming in, and he's taken the catch. And there's is flagged the possibility of the pitch slowing down, so use the hard new ball. He's Campbell to hope. And he, oh, he's hitting hope that one. High in the air. And he's caught. Good catch. Total by from Sydney University, but not out of reach. Here's Campbell. And he's bowled him. Straight through Holloway. He's got two. In Ozaka with his third over. Oh, that's smashed down the ground for four by Robinson. That was smoked off the middle of the bat. Part. The, uh, avenue that they look to attack. Oh, a full toss, hammered out through the offside. That is a beautiful shot. Crashes into the fence for four. Played with great authority. It was a gift outside. Right, to Cummins. Mishra in. Cummins is going to go there. He's not going to reach it, though, and he's caught on the boundary. He throws his head back in anguish. He didn't get it out of the middle. It was a long boundary. In the same match. Wow. It is some achievement, man. I wouldn't mind doing that for the season. Mishra in. Clipped off the hips here by Robertson. He might get two here. It's a bit of a chase in the outfield. They turn around quickly. And that's 50 for Liam Robertson. Wonderful innings off just 34 balls. Got to play. Mishra to McKelder. If he tries to go downtown, it loops and hangs in the air. Down to Long On. And that's the end of the inning. So it's short-lived for Ryan McKelder. He departs for six. And a sweeper on the offside. Where will Mishra deliver this one? Full ball hit hard and high for six over Long On. That Watley now. Robinson's in, hit high. They're coming towards the commentators, and that's six. Robinson is going off. Another one hit in the air, but the field is coming in, and he's taken the catch. And there. Just flagged the possibility of the pitch slowing down, so use the hard new ball. He's Campbell to hope. And he, oh, he's hitting hope that one. High in the air. And he's caught. Good catch. Total by from Sydney University, but not out of reach. Here's Campbell. And he's bowled him. Straight through Holloway. He's got two in two. Holloway went.
and it's the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup resuming after the first innings break. Sydney University batted first, made eight for 150. So Campbelltown with a stiff task here, 151 to get the points. I'm joined by Jack Clifton. Jack, well, we're in for an exciting afternoon with Campbelltown in a must-win situation. Yeah, good afternoon, Manners. Good afternoon to all the, the viewers and listeners around. Thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon. Yes, it's, it's going to be exciting. All of these, uh, these matches are exciting, but I think this holds a, a little bit uh, greater uh, weight, this, uh, this clutch, especially for Campbelltown Camp. They need to win to keep their hopes alive of, of making it to the semi-final stage in the, in the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. Did a decent job with the ball, probably um, hamstrung themselves a tad with a few overthrows and, and uh, a drop catch, but overall their bowling and fielding was, was pretty good um, and, and were able to strict Sydney University to 150. So my opinion is I think they need to go out here and, and throw caution to the wind a little bit in these first six overs, uh, try and take the attack to Sydney Uni, get some runs on the board where that ball is hard and, and new and fresh because um, that pitch is going to slow up a little bit later, but should be a really interesting viewing. Flynn Duncan on strike to Maladay, and the first ball is short of a length, and Flynn Duncan tries to play across the line and could just bottom edge it. No run. Yeah, good, good intent there from Flynn Duncan, though. Um, the bowls themselves are going to be a bit nervous, going to take them a little bit of uh, time to get into their groove as well, and if, as a batsman, you can get on top early on, uh, uh, hit some aggressive shots early, maybe get the occasional boundary. Maladay. Good ball and played into the offside and there's a, a fumble and they take a single. Good, Good running. running from Campbelltown. And they're off the mark. And that's the other thing. We, we, we talk a lot about the the big shots and the fours and sixes and that's obviously what grabs the headlines and gets the highlights manners but good running between the wickets picking up regular ones and twos uh, not soaking up too many deliveries without scoring runs is, is real uh, it really is a key in in t20 especially in these early overs and uh, just looking at the field they've got a, a deep third man on the rope and they've got a deep a square leg about five meters in from the boundary Watley digs one out good ball from Maladay yeah, had a good day yesterday, Kaylin Maladay against Sutherland in the um, the Belvedere Cup, four for 41 from, from 10 overs, and he's had a, a pretty productive campaign um, so far, the, the right arm quick. 13 wickets for the season. And again, and that's hit to Lo Oh! That has just got over Midon's outstretched left hand of, that's Holloway. It's yeah, a it big is. unit, and it's got past him, and Four runs there. Yeah, risky, but he's got away with it on that occasion as Watley. You've got to chance your arm in these early stages, and hopefully shots like that do come off and, yeah, it gets a little bit of luck, but it was hit firmly enough and had just enough elevation to, to get to the boundary. Just a bit of a short-arm jab there by the all-rounder Watley. Four Viva runs here for, for the visitors. Maladay. Short ball, and that's pulled nicely for four. He was onto that one very quickly, was Watley, and it's gone between mid-wicket and mid-on along the ground for four, two boundaries in a row. And Campbelltown are none for nine after five deliveries. And, and Jack, if they are to challenge this total of 151, they need to get off to a good start. They need to take advantage of these six overs where the field's up. We saw it got a lot harder to score as innings went on for Sydney University. Maladay, last ball, the first over, and that's in the air. Holloway's going back. Oh, and it's just got over his head. So frustrating for the bowler. And Watley survives a, a spooned shot. Oh, perfectly placed, you would say. None for <laughs> 10 after one over. Boy, Maladay will be frustrated as he takes his cap from his teammate. Yeah, he will. Um, that ball wasn't there to be playing that kind of shot. It hit very high in the bat and, and really just ballooned out onto the onside. A bit of luck there for Watley in a couple of those shots. But as they say, um, yeah, you've got you to chance your arm from You've got to be in it to win it. Yep. And um, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah. He's we'll just throwing all. Throw yeah, it all I, I love this. Yeah, keep them coming. But Watley 9 off 4 and... Yeah, sometimes you, you need to not look a million bucks early on. doesn't matter how your runs come. Now, McElduff to start from the grandstand end. The right arm finger spinner. 
Well, we saw last week, didn't we, where, where Eastern Suburbs were chasing 143 a, against Manly. They just couldn't get going early on. It didn't matter who was who was facing it, and that's a credit to the Manly attack. But they really hamstrung themselves in the first six to eight overs when they were scoring at like four, four and a half and over. They've got 10 off this first over now, Campbelltown Camden, using that as a launching pad. They're already ahead of the required run rate, so it's a, it's a good positive start by the visitors. Watley on strike. McElduff bowling around the wicket, so angle across the right-hander. And it's worked a treat already. The angle has beaten the batter, who just squirted it off the inside edge to short fine leg. So when a right arm off spinner uh, is bowling around the wicket, they obviously they can angle it away with the arm and then try and spin it back. Push down to long on for a single. He's very busy when he runs in, McKeldoff, isn't he? There's a lot of uh, a lot of hand movements for for the spinner coming around the wicket to the right hander have uh, has effectively nega um, negated the the LBW. So that's something that the batsman will have in their mind because it's pretty much always going to pitch outside the leg stump. It's a good delivery, pitched up, and Flynn at Duncombe just plays it into the offside. Will they take on the spinner while the field's up? Oh, no, he defends that one. This is a good start from McElduff. Only 66 runs for the season for Toby Flynn Duncan, but did make 44 off 32. And the only game prior to this one they played where they got on the field, that was against Northern District in round one. He's bowled him. McElduff gets the wicket in the second over. Flynn Duncan is dismissed for one. And Campbelltown, a one for 11. What a jaffer. Got between bat and pad, and the stumps go crashing. He really sp spun sharply off the, uh, the pitch there, man. It's beautiful line and length, and he was in all sorts. Flynn Duncan didn't know whether to come forward or stay back. Ended up just kind of prodding forward, and it thundered into the stumps. Early breakthrough for the students, and a big one as well. Flynn Duncan, a very uh, respectable batsman at the top of the order. And here's uh, another look at it on the action replay. Wide of the crease, tosses up, straightens with the arm. And that's the wicket from the spinner. Brings Isaka out to the crease. Jackson was one of the uh, several players in, in Sydney that went up and played in the Northern Territory Strike League and um, it's become a common trend for a lot of not just first-class players, manners, but, but Sydney grade players to, to get some reps during the off-season and obviously being a little bit close to home than going over to the UK and playing club cricket. Now Kilduff right in the block hole and Isaac squirts it away for a single on the onside. So the end of the second over and a successful one for the young off spinner from Sydney University. It's one for 12. Campbelltown, Camden need 151 to take the points in this Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup fixture. The skipper of Sydney University, Tim Cummins, Pat Cummins' brother, said that he thought the pitch would turn as the day went on, well, he was spot on. Yeah, nice work there by, by Sydney Uni. Able to pull it back, get a wicket early on, which is what Campbelltown Camden did. Caleb Malladay has come across from Randwick Petersham to Sydney University for this season. Malladay delivers and... Azaka defends. We saw Maladay playing for Randy Peets in the 50 over final last year where Randwick Petersham beat Sydney Cricket Club in the 50 over final. We do see a bit of movement uh, from players between clubs, especially around this region um, where really only a stone's throw from King Street at Newtown. So the, the distance between kind of Randwick and Coogee and Newtown isn't huge. The good ball, there's a big appeal. The crowd's gone up with Maladay. 
The umpire is unmoved. Yeah, I think he might have flicked his pad um, with the bat. I think um, with the replay might have been a little bit of a, a brush of the pad there, but certainly confidence boosting for, for Kalen Maladay and the, the boys, the active home support. They're, uh, they're getting around their, their troops, hoping to usher them on to another breakthrough. Yeah, we'll see. It probably flicked the bat, thigh pad or pad as it went through. Maladay in again. Oh, he's beaten the bat. Isaac had just poked at that ball outside off stump and Maladay got a bit of extra bounce there and it was too good for the batter. On the move there, the batter just walking towards the bowler. And that's the advantage for the bowlers here as well. We talk about the batsman liking the ball when it's new um, and having the, the, the field up, but they've got a, a nice new ball, a nice high scene. The ball swinging a bit, bouncing a bit more than it would when it's a bit older. Maladay. Just gets a bit straight, and Ozak is, oh, he set off for a single, and Max Hope, a fine leg, had a shy at the stumps. Could have been disaster for Campbelltown. Ozak is feeling the pressure of this relentless over from Maladay. Yeah, that's right. He's obviously lifting. That's, what, that's the great thing about playing with, with uh, live sport, isn't it? Having a big crowd behind you it really makes you pick up your own performance. So Maladay's well be feeling like he's 12 feet high and maybe a few mind games being played um, as well here by Azaka. Here's Maladay. Push down leg side and that's a wide. It's called one for 13 now. Haven't quite reached the levels of, um, of Gordon support la last year. I think we had perforated eardrums when we'll finish at Chatswood <laughs> Oval last year. But um, yeah, great to see um, people getting behind their, their local team. Great, great to see them supporting um, New South Wales Premier Cricket or, or grade cricket. It's fantastic to see on a Sunday afternoon. Maladay in and thumped into the offside by Zaka, but he can't beat the field. No, you're spot on. McDonald's New South Wales Premier Cricket's getting expanded coverage through these televised games and it can only be good for the growth of the game and I imagine for these players they must turn up today knowing that it's being televised on KO and the match centre and you know adds a bit of a, a spring into your step and a bit of a boost turn it on for the cameras oh they've taken a single there good stuff a uh, terrific over there from So it's actually Tate bowled that over. Mm. They do look similar, so, so it's a mistake on our end. <laughs> I didn't and know the scoreboard had yeah. Maladay the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> well so great, good I was gonna say good Kieran bounce Tate. back yeah. by Maladay, but he didn't bounce back at all. Tate with the first over, two for none, two runs, no wickets. I don't think they'll mind that as well, keeping um, Azaka on strike. He's two off seven. He um, hasn't looked overly confident out there in, uh, in the middle. And having gone for 10 off the first over, it's only concede four off the next two in a T20 game. I'm going to say Sydney Uni on top here with uh, Campbelltown, Camden 1 for 14. Yeah, so Holloway being brought into the attack. Tall left arm quick. Dougald Holloway. In the number 46. Campbelltown, Camden, one for 14. We need 137 more. It's the beginning of the fourth over. Here's Holloway. Isaac had just plays that into the turf for a dot ball. There is a, a feeling by some T20 skippers that they like to change the bowling a lot in the first six overs. So this is the fourth over and we've mm. seen four different bowlers. And I think the, the theory is that it just doesn't give the batters time to settle or sort of eye up an opposition bowler. Holloway in and that's attempted to be steered to third, but in the end just... Played straight to first slip along the ground. One bounce. 
I don't mind that tactic where they change the bowling a lot in the first six overs. But if you're McElduff and you've bowled exceptionally well in that second over, you probably wouldn't mind another crack. Here's Holloway. Time nicely, but straight to cover. And Sydney University are turning the screws here on their home turf. They've won two games in this competition, unlike Campbelltown, who've yet to get a win. And we're seeing the golfing class already because Sydney University, they're just applying a lot of pressure. Campbelltown look like they've been stuck. They've just got stuck, haven't they? They have, and this is what we saw with Eastern Suburbs last week, didn't we? I mean, we saw it with Marcus Atala. Um, he just couldn't seem to, obviously, wasn't able to get the, the, the quick runs, wasn't able to get those big shots that they needed, but he wasn't even able to, to rotate the strike. And we're seeing that a little bit here from, uh, from Jackson Azaka as well. Two off ten. Watley has been at the non-strikers and for what seems like an eternity. He's 10 off six. Um. Holloway in again and it's played nicely in the air, straight over the top of the bowler. It's running along the floor and it's well fielded and they've just got two. That's better. It, it, it looked risky and it certainly was risky, but you could tell it was timed as well. Came off the, the real spring part of the, the lower portion of the bat, and he picks up two. That'll be a, a confidence booster there for Azaka, and hopefully something he can build on for, for the Ghosts. Yeah, absolutely. And good fielding there by Liam Robertson. Nice slide to save two runs. He's all the way in and just squirted on the onside for a single. One for 18 now in the fourth over. Always something covering these great grounds, isn't there? There's a function going on right below That's us. Right. I don't know if you can hear through the commentary mic, um, the PA system. That's it. Watley's got up his sleeve here. Holloway. And just played into the offside for a single casual, but had an air of professionalism about it from Watley. And the end of four overs, it's a one for 19. Certainly, Sydney University have started very well have, with the pill, haven't, haven't they? Yeah. they? yeah, just a really professional performance and it's what we've come to expect from them um, in the T20 Cup, in the, in the 50 over one day comp, which is being played this year due to COVID, but normally is, and also in the Belvedere Cup as well. They're the most successful side. They're a, a, um, a club that has been around for uh, in excess of uh, 150 years. I've been playing uh, first grade cricket for over 100 years. Tate. Whipped away on the onside. Along the ground, through mid-wicket. They've taken two. They'll think about a third, but smart fielding. Just kept it to two. And Watley continues on his merry way. He's timing the ball nicely. He'll need to... And there's no ball and a free hit. The umpire stuck out the arm. Tate's overstepped. It's free hit time. Don't go anywhere. Here we go. Where will this go? Watley. Oh, that's a win for the bowler. If you can get away with a dot ball on a free hit. And Tate. And looks like a man on a mission. Strides back to his mark. He's bowled really well, Tate. That's so much pressure on a bowler uh, in that position. It's a good ball and... All Watley could do was play it to point for no run. This has been a really tight start by Sydney University there. Applying a lot of pressure and at this stage you wouldn't think Campbelltown could chase down this total if the, unless they put the foot down. Well, that required run rate's going up every ball, Manners. Skyrocketing. Only, only 22 in 26 balls they've scored. 
That's played between gully and point for two. Streaky shot from Watley. And Tate's bowled well since he's been brought into the attack from that end, replacing Maladay. I think even the, the, the field places we've seen from Tim Cummins as well have been have been perfect. Um, there's been fielders pretty much everywhere the balls are travelled and the bowlers have credit Did he give your brothers the test captain? You ring him up after like the first day of the Ashes and you say, mate, I thought you got the field wrong. How do you reckon that goes between brothers? Here's Tate. Slashed at that one and he can't beat the field. Didn't quite time it, Watley, and diving stop there in the covers from Mikel Duff. I mean, I, if, I, if my brother was test captain, I'd want to give him advice. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's you. That's you, manners. Yeah, you've always, you've always got something to say. You always want to give you two cents, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Tate now. Bit of a sound, but that was just a bat hitting the pitch. I reckon you'd give you'd give advice to Pat Cummins in if you weren't his brother. <laughs> yeah, probably. Had him on my podcast a couple of times. He's a terrific guy. He's so polite. I think he'd just say thank you very much and and not say anything. <laughs> Here's Tate. And that's just played into the onside. And five overs are gone now in the Campbelltown Camden innings. And they've just meandered to one for 24 in five overs. I had Pat Cummins on my podcast a few years ago, and I have to say, Jack, he was one of the most gracious guests I've ever had, and, and one of the, the few guests I've had that have really taken an interest in how the interview turned out afterwards. So I saw him at a press conference a couple of days after the interview, and he, you know, he really took his time to find me and ask me how the interview was, and he really cared. And you, you, you've interviewed a lot of people. Yeah. Not a lot of athletes really care how the interview turns out. All the way comes in short and dropped onto the offside. Yeah, I think so that's, he has a yeah. terrific character. He really has a terrific character, and you know we've had a bit to do with him commentating on the New South Wales games. He's always very polite. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great man. Well, you see the way that he conducts himself on the field, and it's no surprise that he's a, a real gentleman off the field. When you you see that um, the way that he he plays his cricket and. Um, and there's, there's a reason that he's been named uh, as captain because he's highly respected, not just within the Australian fraternity, but throughout the media and, and by fans and, and different people. Holloway in, this ball slammed out to the offside, but straight to cover as the dots continue to mount up for the visitors from southwestern Sydney. Interesting, Pat Cummins' partner is English, so there's going to be an interesting bit of rivalry, I would imagine, in the Pat Cummins household over the ashes. Yeah. Maybe she's cheering on, cheering on Patty, and maybe supporting England, or maybe her allegiances might lie with Australia. Fingers crossed. There's plenty of uh, uh, plenty of um, uh, English uh, people that move over here and adopt Australia as their own. Short chopped away, and short of a length, they'll scamper through for the single, and Zaka is able to get through. He's moved to a uh, laboursome five from 15. Watley back on strike. Hope you're all enjoying this match on KO Sports. If you're watching, there will be a lot of McDonald's New South Wales Premier Cricket men's and women's throughout the summer for you to watch. And saw some terrific matches last year and some excellent fixtures to start this season. And I'm sure it'll continue. Short and it jumps up off a length and this comes off the, the gloves there of Watley who... He was able to ease himself through for a single. Only a few balls left in this power play minutes. Yeah, and it just hasn't gone the way Campbelltown would have liked it. It's been all Sydney University so far. Very good captaincy from Cummins. He, he took Maladay off after the first over. He held McElduff back, so he's still got three overs left. All the way in, it's short. Chopped away down through Gully. Might think about a second. Azaka was keen for it, but Watley had turned the back, turned his back on his batting partner. But just dealing in singles, so Sydney Uni would be over the moon at how they performed with the ball and in the field here so far this afternoon. 
124 needed from 85 now. Table toppers in the Sydney Thunder Conference, Sydney University. All the way in short. Again, chopped away back with a point. He's got to get on his bike as Zachary does. And uh, they don't end up firing the ball at the stumps. But end of the over. Four singles from it. Very tidy uh, from Dougal Holloway. Again, he's got none for eight from two overs. And Campbelltown Camden after six overs. One for 28. 123 required from the remaining 14 overs at 8.78 runs per over. A couple of uh, cricketing fans and just enjoying the during the coverage family members or fans of the club mm. maybe just on a, a Sunday walk and what a beautiful place to watch mm. cricket yeah it's magnificent here I was just saying to you earlier menace as we see the Sydney University faithful we well, I haven't um, had an opportunity to broadcast this ground I didn't even um, know that this is where Sydney University played their uh, played their cricket, so it's been great to to come here and experience it. And yeah, probably one of the more picturesque grounds um, in the, the New South Wales Premier Cricket Competition. Here's um, Devlin Malone, the leg spinner. He's been a real staple and a mainstay of uh, this Sydney University side for the last few seasons. Big uh, ripper and turner of the ball, so. It's going to be interesting to see how Zaka plays. You feel six overs gone. There's no point Campbelltown can just dinking the ball around the park. They've got to take a chance, and they do. First ball, a swing and a miss outside the off peg. That must have been very close to the off stump there. We'll see Malone threw it up. And that's what Campbelltown have to do. What Lee and Zaka have to take on the bowling now. Ball punched down to long off you have have an over where you can cash in and get 15 or 16 all of a sudden that required run rates just pulled back a little bit that's right then they need a big over to get them back in the contest 122 required 82 balls good start here by devlin malone delay here as a couple of field changes made by Malone stuck the offside field now advancing Zaka and dropping onto the offside bowled well Campbelltown Camden they, they fielded pretty well but batting wise they haven't been able to get anything going so far as Zaka advances and slams this one to whitish long off but again just a single can't get on top of the Sydney Uni bowling, which has been very accurate all afternoon. Batters are struggling for timing, aren't they? We saw that in the second half of Uni's innings as well. It's probably a wise decision by Tim Cummins to, to bat first. Just plays in the crease this time, does Watley, and drops it onto the offside. Strange shot and strange mm. delivery. Look like the bowler changed his action slightly. Maybe that's a bit of a variation. I feel Watley's the key here. He's been out there for 19 balls. He's 18 not out. He gets down on one leg and sweeps it straight to mid wicket. A little bit of a misfield out there on the edge of the circle allows them to get a single. It's more the more the vein that he needs to um, be playing some of these shots. You feel good first over from the leggy. Three runs only conceded. Yeah, good start from Malone. And seven gone, Campbelltown Camden, one for 31. 120 required from 13 overs, and just wonder what the plan is out at the moment for this. these two batters out in the middle. Are they trying to keep wickets in hand and get to the halfway mark and launch from there, or are they just trying to play every ball and its merits and, and wait for that bad ball that they can, they can get away? But must be said, there hasn't really been many bad balls. Ron McKeldiff, who has picked up the lone wicket, a beautiful delivery, which fizzed past the 
inside edge of uh, the opener for Campbelltown Camden, Toby Flynn Duncan is coming back into the attack. Zachar on strike. He's so he probably dropped anchor seven from 18. Killed a fin. Plenty of air. This is slammed. That's going, going, gone. That's the biggest six of the day. They've been waiting for that. And finally, they're able to deliver. It was Watley who swung high and handsome onto the leg side for six. That's a beautiful shot from Watley. He's hit it high over long on and into the trees there. Well timed. Went very quickly over the boundary. They need a few more of them if they're going <laughs> to compete in this fixture. Yeah, that one was right in the slot for uh, for Watley as he faces up now. He tries to do it again. This one he's slapped along the ground. But he's seemed to kind of show his hand a little bit here. Seven runs off the first two balls. And this is a great opportunity to, to have a big over here, Manners. That's right. And if you're sitting at home on your couch with a cup of tea and watching this and maybe getting ready for the KFC Big Bash tonight, well... Don't go anywhere because the next few overs we could see some big hits from Campbelltown Camden because they, they need to propel their innings forward. Zaka waits and he advances and bunts it. Back to the bowl and no run again. This is a, a case where you might want to be able to retire your own batters. <laughs> <laughs> it's not through lack of trying from Jackson and Zaka, is it? He's just unable to time the balls that he's faced. He's been able to get them through the infield. Mikel Finn, he goes this time. He gets a bit more of it and almost dissects the fielders out in the deep. In fact, he does. But great piece of fielding on the boundary. Does limit it to two. And Azaka moves himself along to nine. And we've had nine off this over as well. That was Maladay out there at deep mid-wicket who did the fielding. Smart work. Scooted across. Saved two runs. Top effort. Kelda Finn, Azaka now works off the pads, finds a gap out through mid-wicket. I will say, though, for Azaka, I've seen batters... I remember Shane Watson in, a, in an IPL final once was about the same, 9 off 20, just going along, ambling along. Everyone thought, what's he doing? And then he hit about 100 off the next 50 balls. So if Azaka can do that, then they'll be OK. This one down the leg side, flicked very fine through fine leg, didn't try and hit it too hard, just used the pace as it trickles its way down towards the boundary and they'll come back for three. So this has been a good over for Campbelltown Camden, their best of the inning so far. 13 coming from it. And McKeldoff now two overs, uh, one for 15, and they've moved themselves along to a much more respectable one for 48, one for 44 of eight overs. Watley's moved to 29 from 23. Still plenty of work to be done, but they're trending in the right direction from that over. Mm, yeah, good over. But yeah, as I was saying, you know, as a T20 batter, you do have a little bit more time than maybe you think you have. So, you know, we've seen it, with, I mentioned Shane Watson, but the experienced players, Chris Gale, Dan Christian, they all know that you've got a few balls to just take stock of the situation, get to know the pace of the pitch, but... If you do what Isaac has done, 10 off 21, you've got to go on with it. Malone coming in now. Back is Watley looking to chop onto the offside. You've got protection on that long boundary. A deep mid-wicket, a deep square leg, a long on. Then on the offside, very long flat. Off. This one giving a bit more air and punch down the ground, but Malone will get there. So a couple of dot balls to start. This has been miserly work by... The leg spinner. Yeah, good variation so far in this over, the way he's released the ball from different positions. The first one lower, quicker. He's poking away. He might get a single here, Watley will. Piece of fielding on the edge of the circle out there by Charlie Dummer, the Sydney Uni opening batsman. Looked like a top spinner there from Malone, going through quite quickly. Not giving the batters much air, that's for sure. Malone into a Zachary, advances and slaps that, crunches it hard down the ground. Deserved more than one for that, but he'll have to settle for the single. Almost an overthrow. Tim Cummins is aware of it, though, cuts it off. Looking a bit more confident now, Jackson Azaka having 
Played a couple of nice sh shots over the last couple of overs. What does uh, Watley have? Adam Watley have in his bag of tricks. He's forward and pushing out onto the offside, but it's another dot ball. This is miserly stuff from Malone. 1.5 overs, none for five. Most unheard of in T20 cricket. Anything that would make it better would be if he could get a breakthrough, get a wicket. Malone in and pushed out to the offside. They'll run through quickly for the single. So again, just three runs from that over. Three runs from each of his first two overs. Devlin Malone, he's got none for six. Sydney Uni well and truly on top here after nine overs. Kimball 10, Camden in pursuit of 151, a one for 47. Malone displaying a lot of skill and guile with the ball, varying his pace, varying his flight, varying his arm position for delivery. Terrific, terrific stuff from the, from the wrist spinner. And now we see a chat between bowler and skipper. And there's been a change. So Mikel Duff was on for one over, got the treatment, 13 runs. And Tim Cummins has reacted straight away. And Kalen Malladay will bowl his second over from the grandstand end. He bowled the very first over that went for 10. One for 47 off nine overs. And after 10 overs, I think Sydney University were about 70. So they're way behind. It's a bouncer. And it's off the top of the bat and bouncing away to fine leg for four. Yeah, Vabel runs there for Watley. Element of luck in it. But used the paints of the bounce and maybe even came off the back of the bat there. They had a bit of luck in their inning, Sydney Uni. So they'll take that Campbelltown Camden. And Watley playing quite a nice little hand here. He's moved himself up to 35 from 29. Not discounting any of the, the batsmen to come. You feel that if they were to pull this one out of the fire, they need exactly 100 now as well. But Watley would probably you want him scoring a, a fair chunk of those. He faces up now and digs out a good length ball on middle of the league stump from Maladay. And it's a single. It was a good delivery, wasn't it? Right up there. There's no substitute for that, is there? In, in the history of cricket, the Yorker hasn't gone out of favour, has it? It hasn't, no. hasn't become an unpopular ball, whereas short of a length deliveries and, and uh, I guess, different deliveries have kind of faded into obscurity and, and changed. But the fact that we're still seeing the Yorker or the slow Yorker or the wide Yorker in T20 shows what a valuable ball it is. Advancing and slashing away through gully as it races its way down towards the boundary. They're going to come back for two. Good running. They're running to the danger end. Uh, that was was Zaka. Nice bit of variation there from Maladay. But you're right about the Yorker. But interesting, we have seen batters in T20 cricket develop shots to counter it. So you get the, the Dill scoop or the Ryan Campbell scoop, as it's sometimes called, or the little flick we've seen a few times. So it's amazing how the batters have adapted. Maladay in, punched firmly out to cover. There's a shot at the striker's end. Was it Ryan Campbell ahead of his time? He was playing, oh, we're going to see overthrows here. So that's sloppy from Sydney Uni. They end up getting a couple. He was playing that shot 2001, 2002. He was, yeah. yeah. He, cl he claims to have invented the shot, and I think there's pretty, pretty, it's pretty hard to dispute. Coach of the Netherlands now, Ryan Campbell, lives over in Holland, and I think he was encouraged by what he saw in the, the T20 World Cup with what the Dutch were able to do. Of course, they've... Had some major scalps in the past. They beat England famously in a, a T20 World Cup a little while ago. Maladay in as this ball's hammered out to cover. It's timing the ball, as I could just can't find the gaps. I saw the Australians play the Dutch once in the Netherlands on an AstroTurf pitch. You wouldn't see the Aussies playing on an AstroTurf <laughs> pitch nowadays, but this was back in the 90s when I was living in Amsterdam. So Maladay's got... One ball to come. Nine's come from this over. So they've been able to last two of the three, two of the last three overs have been good. And then it's almost a miracle catch on the edge of the circle. Diving across there was a Damien Mortimer. And that would have been some highlight reel. It was a great dive. Just couldn't quite hold on to it. So again, Chancey Zama Zachary moves to 16. Watley's 36. 
halfway through the run chase here in Campbelltown, Camden. One for 57, 94 needed from the last 60 balls here as Andrew Mensah will run us through the next five overs. Thanks, Jack. The last few overs have been prosperous for Campbelltown, Camden, and it's got them back into the contest. It looked like they were going to hit the 10 over mark way behind the required run rate and they are short of that but 94 of 60 deliveries is not impossible they've got two set batters Isaka who started very slowly was just ambling along he started to increase his strike rate and he's now got to 16 of 26 deliveries Watley's 36 off 30 and that ball's played to cover dot ball Malone the leg spinner continues Ozaka has to take him on. There's three fielders in the deep on the onside, two on the offside. That's tossed up, and that's hit hard towards deep mid-wicket, and he's dropped it. He was diving forward. The ball was dipping, and it slipped out, and that's a chance for Ozaka. And one run to the total. Yeah, Litchfield out there. And Charles Litchfield dropping the catch. It was hard. It was, it was dropping on him. It was low. A couple of drop catches, and... Played into the onside by Watley just for a single. More of that from, from Campbelltown Camden as we see a, a replay. Um, can't, can't afford to be having any dot balls. At the, at the very minimum, rotating the strike, getting a single at least every ball, and then try and cash in with some, some twos and fours if, if they drop and lose their length a little bit, uh, the Sydney Uni bowlers. Because you can't occupy Devon Malone four overs for 15 or 16. There's, no. there's no way they're going to win it with that. It's thrown up and hit to long on for a single. And I get, I get that he's bowling well. He's bowling really good line and length. He's showing great variation. Um, and he's speeding a couple of quicker ones. But I think, yeah, one, yeah, one down for, for 60 in the 11th over. You've got wickets in the shed. Chance your arm. See if you can come up with a couple of big shots. It's good, quicker ball. And again, just thumped into the onside for a single. Maybe they needed to take the tactic that a lot of opposition players take against someone like Rashid Khan, which is say, OK, Malone's going to have 24 deliveries. Let's just try and get 24, 25 runs off them. That's hit hard and straight. Long one's coming around. He's dived and stopped. Great piece of fielding. Exceptional fielding, and they've got two. That saved a boundary. Yeah, they've been good in the outfield, Sydney Uni. There's been a couple of really good stops like that um, down there. Not sure who that, that was. Might have been Liam Robertson actually down there. But yeah, those uh, you, you tally all those up. You do four or five of those in an innings, and you uh, you can cut a team ten or fifteen runs short. So three overs, none for twelve for Malone. As you said, exceptional stuff. And yeah, maybe they should have just tried to milk him for a little bit more. Mm. Look for more singles. But he's been too good for them so far. Now Max Hope. Been brought into the attack. We saw him bat very well. Left arm, finger spinner. See the figures there. Malladay going at 10 and over. McElduff, he had a great first over, but then the second one went for 13. Then really good stuff from the rest of the bowling. All right, Maxi Hope. Adjusting his field, moving mid-wicket a bit straighter. Left arm, finger spinner, bowling around the wicket. Angle in and spin away from the right hander. Here he is, Hope. It's very short, and the batsman has taken advantage of that. He's hit it hard behind square leg for four. That was a loosener in every, um, every facet of the word, wasn't it? Just, uh, yeah, drop that one short. And um, that's what they need to do, though, Campbelltown, Ken. They want to get in striking distance of this total. They, they've got to put balls away like that. Can't be hitting it to the man. That was as good cricket. And, and Watley again leading the charge. 42 off 33 for him now. He's starting to motor along. Hope tosses up. And there's an appeal. But it would have been a hopeful appeal at best. No pun intended. I think it was intended. Well, the hit and hope was intended before, but <laughs> that one wasn't. Here he is. Hope in. Again, pushing it down leg side. That's three deliveries that have been 
push down leg side and Watley will be frustrated with that one. There's only one fielder behind square leg on the onside and he found him. Watley, will he take on Hope? It's a good ball and it's just played straight for a single. He's done a good job, Tim Cummins. He's rotated his bowl as well. Since the power play has ended, he's been able to negotiate his fielders and put them in positions where they have, for a large portion, cut off those those big shots. It's um, really slipping away from Campbell Tank Kemp than you feel now. Hope in. Shorter ball, and that's... Oh, he's out! There's a big appeal. Was he stumped or was he caught yeah. behind? I think he was stumped in the end. He must have lifted his back foot. He did. And that is a smart bit of keeping from Tim Cummins. He was awake to the situation. He whipped the bales off. Hope gets a wicket. And Watley is gone. Or is it Azaka? Azaka is the man gone. Yep. Azaka out for, out for 20. And he had to try and elevate the run rate. He was trying to do that then. And just a, a momentary lapse in concentration. Lifted the foot just ever so slightly. And Tim Cummins is, is known as one of the premier wicket keepers in this competition, and that's exactly why. Smart work from him. It's a great shot of it here uh, as we see him uh, go for that big cut. Just lifted his foot ever so slightly. Cummins appeals to the square leg umpire, and the finger goes up, and that's just rubbing salt into the wound uh, to a, a frustrated Campbelltown Camden side here at University Oval. Great work. Hope gets a wicket in his first over. He... Played a handy little innings earlier today and he's got a wicket. Now the acting skipper, Nick Appleton, comes to the crease. The left-hander. So the score now, two for 68. Will Appleton take on the bowling? Just eight overs to go after this. You, you, you feel they have two minutes. The, the, the way it is at the moment, still 83 required from eight overs, yet you're kind of getting into that 11, potentially 12, over, uh, 12 runs and over. Hope, first ball to Appleton. He plays with a nice straight bat. No run. The end of 12 overs here at University Oval. Campbelltown Camden are 2 for 68. They need 151 to win this game. But at this stage, you would think Sydney University looks set for their third win in this competition. They are at the top of the ladder in the Sydney Thunder Conference. And mm. with a win here, it would even keep them at the top. And depending on, on other results, and, and we'll go around the grounds in just a moment, minutes, but depending on other results, it could uh, almost guarantee them a spot in that top four and, and a spot in the, the, the semi-finals. They've, they've bowled really well today. I've been really impressed with them. And Devon Malone's going to continue. Watley hits straight. And they get one run. When I was growing up, Campbelltown Camden had the Lee brothers playing out there. Shane and Brett Lee, and then they moved across to Mossman. I guess that would have been the closest place to Wollongong where they, where mm. they grew up, wouldn't it? Of, of the Sydney clubs, that is. Here's Malone. Dropped it short, and Appleton could have played that back onto his stumps, but it just missed, and Cummins did the keeping. So Malone is into his last over. He's just conceded 13 runs so far. And again, quick and flat, and Appleton plays it through the cover region. They take one. That's all they'll get. So Appleton's off the mark. None for 14 of 3.3 overs for Malone. And a bowling spell like this in T20 is, is almost as valuable as three or four wickets anywhere else for Devlin Malone. What Lee, all he can do is bottom edge that and they get a single.
Maloney in again. Tosses up. He tempts the batter. Appleton swings at that one. But he's found the gap between all the fielders, and they take two more. Yeah, right idea. Didn't really get to the pitch of it, and was swinging the arms away, but got a fair chunk of it. And um, fortunately for um, Appleton on that occasion, it kind of landed in no man's land of that over to come back and double up. So a couple of runs to the to the total. Malone, last ball of his spell. It's hit in the air. The field is coming across, and he's taken the catch. What a way for Malone to finish his spell. He gets a wicket. He now has figures of one for 17 off four overs. He dismisses the opposition skipper, Nick Appleton. Good catch by the man in the deep. And the Campbelltown Camden Ghosts are three for 73. Yeah, well deserved there for Devon Malone. He's bowled really well in this spell. Um, as I said before, he, he could, have, could have had three or four wickets the way that he's, he's bowled. He's kept things really tight, and he's really strangled the life out of this attempted run chase by Campbelltown Kempton, and uh, that was well-deserved. Just going for that big shot, Appleton, Nick, you, you don't hold that against a batsman at all. They need to elevate this run rate. They need to try and go after the bowling, and he did that, uh, but just didn't got, get quite enough on it. He would be, he'll be disappointed because you get another half a metre on that at six runs, and can potentially kind of maybe not change the game but but put you in a, in a much stronger position as it is no six runs no runs at all and, and it ends up being uh, being a wicket as um, we see uh, Blake Smith make his way out to the middle with things looking pretty grim here for Kimbleton Camden yeah that's right it's been a professional performance by Sydney University the spinners have been exceptional Jackson Isaac is stumped by Tim mm. Cummins off the bowling of Max Hope. Unfortunately, no one's really been able to mirror what Adam Watley's done. If they'd had someone else that could be um, yeah, scoring over that 100 strike rate regularly, maybe around that 110, 115 mark, they would be in a position where they might be able to launch in the, in, in the last few overs. But as it is, it's, uh, what, almost 12 and over. Smith is on strike, yet to get off the mark. Max Hope delivers and squirted to third, no run. One of the other teams that Sydney you know, will have an eye on is, is the reigning chance Bankstown, who are in the Thunder Conference with them. Another dot ball. Uh, and they're actually in a clash against uh, Blacktown this afternoon. Bankstown 6 for 136 off their 20 overs with Dan Solway, the former New South Wales Blues, 70 from 60 at the top of the order. That's dropped short and there's a confusion at the non-striker's end and I do not think Max Hope has taken that return cleanly. I think Watley would have been in trouble if Hope had with the bales off, but in the end, he's back safe. And they're in a good position against uh, Blacktown. Blacktown stumbling six for 83 after 14 overs, so um, still needing um, another 54 runs to win that one. Something like um, Bankstown will keep the pressure on. Hope in again, and it's played nicely into the gap. And they take. Oh no, there's confusion! And again. Hope unable to take the ball in the non-strikers end, but I think Smith would have been safe. A win there for Bankstown will take them up to, to two wins, so they'll be nipping at the heels of Sydney Uni, so it'll be an interesting fifth and final round next Sunday, Manners. Absolutely. Wonder where we'll be at. Hope. Good delivery, and just they get a single, so the end of... 14 overs, it's 3 for 75 here. Watley's on 46, Smith is on 1. Watley just 4 runs away from a half century. He's played very well this afternoon. He's 46 off 39. Exciting run chase going on between uh, local rivals Penrith and Parramatta. Penrith... Uh, Got the score of the day so far. Six for 172 from their 20 overs menace. Um, 
Uh, Lydiard at the top of the order, 56 from 32 at four fours and four sixes and some other useful contributions. But Parramatta are making a great attempt uh, at chasing it down. Nick Burtis, who we've seen in the, the Sheffield Shield a few times, he's 66 not out from 39, seven fours and three sixes. And uh, Kant is within the wicketkeeper batsman, 24 not out from 19. Currently two for 123 in the 14th over. So some, a bit of excitement happening out, happening out there in the Golden West. And that's uh, going to have implications on the Thunder Conference uh, as well. They might chase that down. Mm. The change of bowling from the other end. Holloway being brought back into the attack. He's bowled two overs, none for eight so far. Dougald Holloway. The left arm speedster. Watley's on strike and it's got to be the Watley show now if Campbelltown Camden are to threaten this target. They need a big over. Can Watley deliver? To bouncer and just fairly ungainly shot there from the batter. It's like a slow ball bouncer. Here's Holloway. Pitched up and just played to Gully, no run. Watley edging closer to a half century. Campbelltown Camden's Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup season is drifting away. It's a bouncer and it's hit in the air and one bounce and over the rope for four. That's Watley's half century. He goes to an even 50 of 42 deliveries. Been a one-man show so far. He's done the bulk of the scoring. 50 out of 79. He's played really well. I've been really impressed with Adam Watley. Um, I thought he bowled really well with the ball as well. Deserved um, better than what he got. I think he just finished with the one wicket. But, yeah, a, a really good innings. He risked his arm, his hands early um, and threw a few risky shots through the outfield. But he's played some really proper cricket shots and that was a great way uh, to bring up the half-century milestone. Holloway. Pitches up and pushed down the ground. They think about two, but they do not take on the fielders. Probably sensible because it was a good throw from Liam Robinson coming in there from the boundary. Uh, played brilliantly with the bat before, 67. And it looks like it'll be a match winning knock the way Campbelltown mm. Camden are going. Blake Smith on strike, he's just got one run. Holloway. Played to backward point. They take a single. There's a shy at the stump. Smith might have been in trouble there, but didn't hit. Just one run to the total. It's the last ball of the 15th over. Three for 81. We've seen no. teams get out of jail from this position before. It's effectively two, maybe a, a tad above two runs a ball. As long as Watley's there, they're, they're a speculative look here to visitors. Don't, don't want too many balls like that, but I think as soon as, if, if Watley is dismissed, I think that would put a, you put a red line through them. Uh, they're certainly outsiders at the moment, but you feel if he's there, a couple of big shots and confidence grows. Yeah, that's right. 15 overs gone, three for 81. I'm just surprised they haven't been a little bit more daring should I say Jack mm. I thought the last couple of overs it really was at the point of the game where you've got to look for not just the boundary perhaps the the maximums yeah a lot of um hill to aim at at this beautiful Sydney University oval so you probably want to be hitting to that shorter side as mm. well it's a shot from Watley to bring up his half century 50. 
Fifty the one from forty four. It was it was a gift. You don't mind getting those when you're forty seven on half out, tracker, yeah. Seventy off thirty. Well, they need five or six big overs. <laughs> yeah, well, not six because there's only five <laughs> overs left. But <laughs> let's see what they can do. Hopefully, might see some fireworks here, maybe some big shots, and maybe some wickets. In comes Maladay on the hip, nudged away into a gap there. They might try and double up here. And they do. There's a bit of hesitation, but they'll come back and Smith will pick up two Babel runs. That's the minimum that they need each ball. Score moves along to three for 83. Into the 16th over. 68 from 29. Uh, the excitement level you get in, in T20. Plenty of big bash matches we've watched in the past with positions like this and this is a nice strike down the ground in fact it's not going to get to the boundary it's pulled back just inside and they only get a single for it so probably feeling a little bit ripped off there is, is smith he struck it nicely and it almost went to the rope but he just picks up a single to move to five it does get did he hit it and hold his pose there jack for a little while smith i wasn't watching him but maybe he did because it looked like it was going yeah. to, to the boundary. Off the, off the bat, it, it looked like it was sweetly struck. But does give Watley a chance here against Maladay. Maladay in, pitched up and slugged down the ground. They may try and come back for a second. They will. Smith turns quickly. The throw is a bit of a wild one, it must be said, and by Robertson. And they get back in the end fairly comfortably for two more. So five of the first three balls, not the worst start to an over. Fours and sixes are the currency they need to be dealing in. Um, Campbelltown Camden. 65 from 27. Watley now to 53. On leg stump, clipped away nicely, but he struck it so well he's picked out the man. That deep square leg. So just a single. It's a nice shot by Watley. It was a um, great technique and he timed the ball nicely. Unfortunately, there was a a sweeper at the deep. Five men on the boundary. It's understandable when you're trying to preserve uh, a potential victory here for the students. This ball hammered, slapped down towards long off. Again, just the single. Striking the ball nicely, the ghost, but unable to find these gaps. Hard when you've got five men out, though, isn't it, to find boundaries. We see it in ODI cricket all the time from pretty much over overs 15 to overs 35 is the reason why they deal a lot of batters pick up the ones and twos that's right uh, Campbelltown just haven't really got on any sort of run have they they mm. haven't been able to string a couple of good overs together they've had maybe I think two really good overs mm. but then the rest just haven't been able to prosper especially after starting so well Maladay in again struck firmly down to long on for a single to Watley. And he'll retain the strike. Says 62 required from four overs. Watley moves himself to 55. He's played a lone hand, unfortunately, in this uh, in this run chase. And uh, required right now above 15 and over. Getting into almost impossible territory, impossible stakes at the moment. You never know. Uh, in the game of T20, there are some games that can be turned on their head by a big over, but you felt they probably needed to get a maximum or two or a few boundaries in that over, but just so difficult with the line of lengths that you've been bowling in. Uh, the great field placements and Tim Cummins has uh, installed here this afternoon. It's been an impressive performance from Sydney University. Pro very professional with the bat. They made it a very good 150 led by Liam Robinson and some useful performances from Max Hope and Tim Cummins, but a professional performance get to 150. And then with the ball, they've been exceptional. They just haven't let Campbelltown, Camden get on top of them really at any stage. Their spinners, Hope and Malone, kept the pressure on, and Campbelltown just haven't had the answers. Here's Tate starting his third over. Gets a ball that just deviates off the seam a little bit. It's been knocked into no man's land, and it only travelled 20 metres, but they're able to get back for two. So good, uh, good running there, especially by Watley, who recognised that it had got away from a couple of fielders, and he 
He could cash in. He's gone to 57. And, uh, what could is more than likely going to be a, a losing effort. He does have the opportunity to take the mantle of the, the leading run scorer for the day if he can get another 11. Tate in this ball is creamed out onto the onside out to deep mid wicket. One bounce to the fielder out on the rope. Just one more. They haven't found many gaps in this chase. A lot of balls have been hit straight to the fielders, even the infielders. There'll be a very happy crowd here at University mm. Oval. The faithful have well, they've wandered in from the surrounding areas. Maybe there's some, still some people in the colleges. Studying late into the year, man. Yep. It's not something that you were familiar well, with. Well, actually, I had to come back and redo an exam. <laughs> I remember it was like January, like third. You know, I'd failed. I'd failed it by by just a point, and they give you a second chance. Tate's in. They go for the ramp, and I thought that might have ricocheted onto the stumps for a moment. Ends up being a dot ball, which is absolute gold for Sydney University at this stage. It was a bat onto pad, maybe. It wasn't too far away. No. Yeah, I've got like 49 out of 100 in a psychology exam, and they said, look, it's so close, we'll give you another one. And I think it was like, like January 4th was the exam, so it was like I'm still recovering from New Year's Eve. <laughs> Advancing and slapping down the ground, and Smith will uh, settle for the single. Tate has been misly, none for 11 in the third over. That would have been fun, doing an exam Mm. On a day that was probably 34 or 35 degrees. And while the Sydney test was going on. Yeah, the other would have loved to have, uh, loved to have been there. What, it was a happy ending I passed the second oh, okay, time. So. Nice. What, uh, what era? That, that was... Mid-90s. Yeah, so, yeah, I was just going to say, so post black and white television. Yeah, pa still paper and pen, though. <laughs> and this corner's ball has gone high in the air. Uni getting underneath it and taking the catch to complete the wicket and Tate... Gets what he least deserves. A wicket finally removing Watley, who has played a fine innings, but unfortunately it's been a lone hand. He departs for 58, and Campbelltown Camden bumbling their way to a defeat here in the Kings Row Sports T20 Cup. They are four for 93. It's a good catch. Was that Malone, the leg spinner, who took that catch? Whoever it was, it was a tough one because it's a little bit breezy here, and you could see the ball just swirling around a bit. But he held his nerve and took the catch. Tate gets the wicket. Campbelltown. And there's Watley. Good innings. He looks disappointed, but he's played well. Held the innings together. Gave the score some respectability. Just what yeah, you want to hear after you scored 58. <laughs> uh, a good innings, but all in vain, unfortunately, with you now 58 required from 19. Blake Smith and Aaron Muart, the new man in. Let's see what this pair can do. Can they create some fireworks? Punched down the ground by Smith. Look to come back for a second. Mule was keen for it, but Smith uh, deterred him. He moves along to eight to complete the over. So 17 overs in the books here at University Oval. In response to uh, the eight for 150 made by Sydney University, um, Campbell Dean Kemp. Just haven't got going this afternoon. Four for 94 after 17. 57 required in the last three overs at 19 and over. I like how all the grade grounds we go to, um, everybody recognises your voice because you do the grade highlights <laughs> on the New South Wales cricket website. Back-to-back -back weeks at Manly Oval and, and here this afternoon. Because obviously if you're a great player, you're going to watch your highlights, aren't you? Yep. Full toss, it's crunched out through extra cover. They'll think about a second and come through for it. When do you record them? Uh, normally on uh, Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. And then they release the package onto, what, YouTube, New South Wales Cricket website, the Match Centre, that kind of thing? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but it's definitely released on the, the social media platforms for 
for Cricket New South Wales. This ball hammered down to long off. Again, well struck, but picks out Malone in the deep for the single. Good way of keeping in touch with what's going on at McDonald's mm. Premier Cricket level. Just watching those highlights. Roughly how long are the, the packages? Uh, between four and five minutes normally. They're, they're a little bit longer now because we've we've got the full brunt of the Kings Grove Sports T20 Cup game. So considering there's 20 teams in the Sydney grade competition, there's no less than 10 games on a Saturday and 10 games on a Sunday. Weather, weather permitting, we, we don't show highlights for all of those games, but you're probably showing highlights between three or four of each competition, the, the Belvedere Cup and also the, the T20 Cup. Uh, so... Yeah, they're, they're kind of around that, that four to six minute mark and that will dwindle down as, as the season goes longer and we get to the, the knockout stages of the, of the Kingsgrove Sports Cup and um, the, we get to the knockout stages or the semi-final stages of the, of the first grade Belvedere Cup competition. But yeah, a lot of fun uh, getting to be involved with that and um, yeah, big thanks to Cricket New South Wales, Interact Sport for kind of keeping that going. This ball hammered out through the offside. Sweeper in the deep will pick it up. They think about a second, not to be. And again, just dealing in singles at Campbelltown Camden. Oh, it's very good for the game. I think it's nice if you're a you're a grade player and uh, you get to jump on and see your highlights or the highlights of your team. It's um, yeah, I think it's a it's a really good thing. I think Cricket New South Wales have been very proactive in, in wanting to really invest invest in in grade cricket, um, and it's it, it's really paid dividends over the last. A few seasons, this ball is hammered, sailing all the way for six. So the 100 is breached by Campbelltown Camden. We uh, don't have sight of what it was down there. There was a, a bit of a clatter, but uh, a little bit of joy at, at last. I think you head straight towards the cafeteria there. <laughs> That's where all well, the sausage rolls and stuff are, just under that balcony. Trust you to know where, well, you know, where the sausage rolls are. I can are. smell them. That's why. <laughs> Blake Smith with a wonderful lofted drive for six. And uh, that will put a smile. Does the ball come back with a bit of sauce on it, do you think? A bit of ketchup? Stand and deliver type stuff. And now he crunches out onto the onside. They're going to come back for two more. So Smith adding some much-needed respectability to the scoreline. He's taken eight off the last two balls to move himself along to 19. 19 off 16 and four for 106. Yeah, but a lot, a lot of fun being involved, um, not just with the highlights packages, but but doing this manners. It's um, yeah, it's a, it's really really good fun for us to get to go around different grounds and obviously get to, to chat to different people at the club. They're obviously uh, stoked at at seeing their team uh, being on beyond KO. Short and a, a pull shot which fails to connect, which ends the over. Maladay's four expensive afternoon for him, none for forty, and with two overs remaining in this one. Campbelltown Camden, 4 for 106, requiring 45 from 12 balls to win. I think this coverage of especially the Kings, Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup could eventually become a real institution. Um, you could be, you know, you could become a real habit just turning on on a Sunday afternoon and watching some T20 action from one of the premier cricket clubs within New South Wales. I think it has a real future. There's not a lot of T20 cricket below Big Bash level in Australia. It's kind of the Big Bash and then that's about it. So, you know, this Premier Cricket T20 competitions right around the country could just eventually just keep growing and becoming more and more important. And pretty good Sunday afternoon, just sitting back watching some high quality T20 cricket. So 12 Sydney, balls left. Yes, yeah, Sydney University, they would love to take a few more wickets, wouldn't they, to end the game on a high. This ball hammered and almost brilliantly caught at cover. It's going to bounce its way around to the cover boundary for four. Up. So Aaron Muir cashing in and joining the party, backed away nicely and played one of those stylish one-day shots which became famous in the, the 1990s, backing away from the stumps to give yourself room and it was almost a brilliant catch by... Charlie Litfield, or Charles Litfield, um, out onto the offside. It's like he had wings there for a second, the way he mm. flew towards that ball. Again, backing away, and you're tucking back with a square leg. They think about a second, they're going to come back. A little bit of slight hesitation. 
but it doesn't matter in the end. They pick up two more. So six from the first two balls. They've shown some fight in the ladder, over, ladder overs, Campbelltown Camden, but it's been uh, far too little and uh, far too late. He was going to seven from three. Smith at the other end, better than a runner ball, 19 from 17. Holloway in, and this ball ricochets off the pads. A cry for leg before by Holloway. Falls on deaf ears. Leg by. And if you're watching this match on KO Sports, well, you've got plenty more cricket to watch today and then the rest of the week. Big Bash starts tonight. The Sixers v the Stars, then... Well, pretty much every day, day now for the rest of summer, you're going to either have test cricket or big bash cricket. So it's heaven for a cricket fan. Especially if you have Fox cricket, exclusive access to all of the tests. ODIs, to, obviously, to come later in the summer, but the BBL as well. The, yep. They've been doing great every, coverage with the yeah, WBL. I think Fox have all the big bash, mm. and they cover every game, whereas free to wear I think, has most of them, but there's 15 or 16 just on... Fox Cricket. Holloway in, and this ball has ricocheted off the body. They'll scamper themselves through for, I think, a leg bite. Looked like it might have hit the shoulder or up towards the helmet. No? Umpire is going to say that they've got a little bit of bat on that. So that will go down as runs. And Jack and I will be back next Sunday afternoon for the final round of the mm. Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. Then there'll be a bit of a break for Christmas. The Sunday after, you and I can do our Christmas shopping instead of commentating. That's right, gives that's us, right. Gives us enough time. Yep, yep. I know you'll probably be at Bondi Junction Westfield, won't you? And bowls him! Thumps into the castle and the bales go flying. And Dougal Holloway is rewarded with a wicket. And Sydney Uni able to get their fifth as uh, Muir swung heartily across the line and a cannon into the leg stump. Campbelltown Camden lose their fifth wicket late on. They're five for 114. Holloway's bowled well this afternoon. Awkward customer. Left arm tall, gets a lot of bounce. And it's been a dominant Sydney University performance. And I think they have to be one of the favourites now to take out the Kingsgrove mm. Sports T20 Cup. They look to have all bases covered couple of really good spinners well three actually if you you count McIlduff, Malone and um, Max Hope and then backed up by Maladay, uh, Tate and Holloway with the ball it's a pretty impressive bowling lineup. Ashkat Mishra is in now and he pushes out to point first ball so that will complete the over 37 required they could send it to a super over with six consecutive sixes. A, a long running joke in commentary circles with cricket. Um, but Campbelltown Camden, they have uh, really laboured and really struggled in this run chase due to some really good bowling and fine fielding from Sydney University. They're five for 114, one over to go. Blake Smith will be on strike. He's on 20. We haven't seen a super over yet in these games that we've covered. Now, we don't know where we'll be uh, next week, but the coverage will be live and exclusive on uh, KO Sports from 2.25pm and also the uh, New South Wales Premier Cricket Match Centre. Uh, we have been alternating between the Thunder Conference and the Sixers Conference, so I'm assuming that that is to continue. We will have a match from the Sixers Conference. And after this ball, we'll give you some of those uh, fixtures for next Sunday's games. And this ball has been skied in the air. Tim Cummins running around, but he is pulls himself out of the way and it's taken by Max Hope and Sydney Uni get their six. A nice way to start the final over with Tate now having very stylish figures. Two for 12 for him off 3.1. Campbelltown Camden limping to defeat. Six for 114. You're yeah, just looking at those fixtures next Sunday. You've got Blacktown hosting Hawkesbury, Fairfield Liverpool hosting Bankstown, Northern District hosting Sydney University. Parramatta hosting Campbelltown, Camden. Penrith hosting Western Suburbs. Mossman hosting Manly, Warringah. And that's where I'd like to be at Allen Border Oval. <laughs> You've already made your choice. Having played you? for Mossman and trained okay, we'll, we'll, many, many we'll, afternoons we'll, at Allen Border Oval. We'll pass it on to the higher ups to see if you can get your. That's the, the scene of the, the nightmare I faced Brett Lee at full pace. <laughs> 
not my greatest afternoon in the nets. Then Randwick, Petersham hosting Eastern Suburbs at Coogee Oval. Be happy with that as well. <laughs> Sutherland hosting Gordon at Glen McGrath Road. I, would, I would, wouldn't mind that one. Ten minutes down the road. <laughs> yep. Uni of New South Wales hosting Sydney Cricket Club. Again, that would be good. Uni of New South Wales were in the final last year. Sydney Cricket Club, an exceptional club. And then finally, UTS North Sydney hosting St George, your club. North Sydney Oval, that'd be a good venue. In steams Tate and push down the ground. They think about a single and decide against it. Campbell is the new man in. Josh Campbell saw him with the ball a little bit earlier on this afternoon and he's uh, at the non strikers end. He may not um, get an opportunity. Well, punched aggressively down towards long on. But again, just the single. So three balls left in the innings. Six for 115. Campbelltown Camden. And this is the end of the road uh, for them in, in regards to the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. They will finish their season at Old Kings Oval against Parramatta next week. And we'll be hoping to avoid a, a winless campaign in a, a shortened Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. Tate comes in, dabbed away under the offside, has to get on his bike, does Mishra. And they decide to not take a shy at the stumps on that occasion. Do we get a vote where, the, where we cover the game next Sunday, Jack? I don't think we even get a say. Mm. <laughs> it's a shame. We're just, we're just told where we need to be and at what time then is. And, you'd be and we're happy to, to do it. You'd be happy and to you're do used it. to that. So. Yep. <laughs> it's going to be exciting and absorbing regardless. Especially if it's finals fever. A, a, a team desperate for a win or something. Mm. Could be a thriller next Sunday. Yeah, we could potentially have a game that might be a playoff. The winner makes it a makes their way playoff. through. So just the last ball to wrap up proceedings here. Eh? An efficient and professional performance by the Sydney University Cricket Club. Again, proving why they are one of the premier cricket teams in this Sydney grade competition. So last ball. Can Tate get a wicket to finish? Into Mishra, who hits this uppishly down towards long off. They'll settle for the single. And they'll finish at 6 for 119. A convincing win for Sydney University in the end. Winners by 31 runs. It continues their stellar campaign in the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. They stay top of the Thunder Conference with their third win through four games, three wins and one draw. While for Campbelltown Camden, it's the end of the road for them. They lose for the second time this year. They've had two uh, rain-interrupted fixtures, so they have no wins, two draws, and two defeats. They'll finish their season at Parramatta and Sydney University. They will look to try and make it an undefeated campaign next Sunday uh, where they will be pushing for another victory. Andrew Mansell, been a, a pleasure to be a chatting cricket with you men as over the last three or so hours. What did you make of this performance from Sydney University this afternoon? Yeah, terrific all-round performance from Sydney University, and I just want to uh, pick out a couple of plays that jumped out at me, for, at me today. Liam Robertson with the bat, a very good 60-70, he anchored the university innings and got them up to that total of 150. And then with the ball for Sydney University, Devlin Malone, the, the, the leg spinner, four overs, one for 17, backed up by Tate with four overs, two for 16. A terrific effort from those two in particular, but a great all-round bowling effort. But I would say Malone, to me, was the pick of the bowlers. And in the end, Sydney University with too much class. Yeah, that's right. Sydney Uni finished with eight for 150, a very healthy uh, total batting first, as um, we saw uh, Robertson top score with 67, as we see the Sydney Uni boys uh, come off to some raucous applause and uh, they will uh, be delighted with that performance. Kemble 10, Ken, just unable to really get going. There was uh, some, uh, some good uh, stroke play at the top of the order. But apart from that, uh, the runs were few and far in between. So Sydney Uni uh, wrap-up proceedings here at University Oval. 
thank you so much for joining the coverage over the last three overs. We don't know where we'll be next Sunday, but we'll be live on the Cricket New South Wales or Premier uh, Premier Cricket um, Live Match Centre and also on KO Sports from 2.25pm for more action in the Kingsgrove Sports T20 Cup. But until myself and Andrew Mensel's voices uh, uh, face the screens of KO Sports again, we're signing off here from University Oval Sydney Uni. Big winners by 31 runs to continue their undefeated start to the season.